after dinner, and everybody know that, and you think we ain't no pick it up where, where Mike left off at. And Mike, tell your kids to get up from the table because you putting too much money in it and they think they rented the city, but they, but they ain't. Let calorie do something running around. And, and that's, that's enough talking about calorie, but uh, to, and to the concerned passengers, welcome back from Memphis where you can deal with this situation over in the third ward on Flint Park, Flint Park Street, dealing with Murphy with the line boards and think you're gonna give a preacher some money and tell a preacher what to do. You got, a, you got another thing coming. You can't boss a preacher around. The preacher come up here thought he, y'all done him wrong, but he realized that that's politics. You can't politic a preacher. And preacher's got to talk for itself. And anyway, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all. And I'll keep coming back. And to TikTok, get my address right and get, put the money in the mailbox like you did before. That's the key of the James Moore, um, resident of the second ward, just like to address the uh, council members that are here. I wish Moore was here. I just got a question to the, to the council uh, a couple meetings back. Uh, a year ago, we had uh, did $8 million in cutting grass, and one of the recent meetings that I attended, they had brought up that they wanted to do $5 million in repair for the city of Flint. And I found that a little disheartening, and I hope that I got it wrong. But if they're doing $8 million to cut grass in the city of Flint, and they only want to put towards $5 million towards the repair of homes in the city of Flint for its residents, I just hope that I'm very wrong on what I'm saying, and uh, that that's not true. And I know the best way to find out is through the council, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Darcy Robinson, and I'm coming before you guys again. Um, I'm the founder of Donation with Love Foundation. Uh, I have a 501 c um, I'm here for the funding for opiates. We have a safe medication and over-the-counter prescription drug program. Uh, with the Narcan training, uh, we are, this program is also the finalist of the Zillion Solution, which is with the University of Michigan Flint. Uh, we have tw over 20 collaboration contract workers and partnerships Motherly Intercession, YMCA, Genesee County Prevention Coalition, Employment Network Solution, Hope of Promise. I have several years experience of family coaching, quick response team, education. Our target here is educating the entire family and saving lives. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Brenda Anderson. I'm Community Engagement Coordinator with Donation Love Foundation. I work with Dr. Garcelle Robinson, going out in the community, educating our youth, teens, and senior citizens on safe medication, how important it is to keep your medication up. I can give you a story about myself. My mother, when I was little, had my medication up high on her shift rope. You don't know what that is, it's like a drug. I wanted the medication and it tastes like candy. So I took the chair, pushed it up to the shift row. I was tall enough to get on my toes, took the medication, ate the medication, started playing with the bottle. So my mother said, where did you get that bottle from? I pointed on top of the shift row. She said, what happened to the pills in it? I ate it. They had to rush me to Hurley Hospital. I had to take medication to throw up. And they had to pump my stomach. So I know how important it is to teach people to keep medication up. 
not just for overdosing, but keep my kids from coming to the opioids. is the gateway to street drugs. And education is the key for intervention and prevention of our public. So they can make informed decisions that can prevent them from making mistakes. So we don't just talk about safe medication. We talk about addiction. We talk about tolerance and how your health plays in part of addiction. We talk about ways parents can help their children. We give them resources and information to take home to the parents so they can be informed as well. We talk about what physicians can do to help with pain management. So our children, our adults, when they have surgery or other uh, illnesses, don't get hit with drugs. We also talk about problems that, unfortunately, we see. Overdose. We teach the public how to use Narcan, educate them, give them directions to take home. Because sometimes when you're in a spot, you can freeze up and not remember what you've been trying. So we give a full package to the public. And that's the way we're going to prevent our children getting addicted. So education is the first step in prevention. Thank you.
And just know I was informed that, I might admit, this is on a coming in basis. Today, right now, since we had the meeting, 55 people in the city of Flint died from overdose. What? Since our last meeting. Yep, sure enough. The longer we wait, the more lives are lost. Time is life. So hopefully this council will have the wherewithal to pass that money so you all can get into the community and educate people on how to use Narcan. Since Narcan is so widely available, you know, the first step was getting Narcan to the community. Now you got to know how to use it. So we're so grateful that organizations like you all have taken up the mantle to prioritize this and to teach us what to do. Councilwoman Burns stated that it was multiple deaths in one day last meeting. I walked up on people at the Starling Park neighborhood lying in the street unresponsive. Valentine's Day, February is coming up, and a lot of people are found dead from overdoses around that time. Hopefully we can pass that money and might do the right thing. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address uh, the audience or do a response? Yes. yes. The chair recognizes third board council person. Um, thank you to all the speakers who um, spoke. Um, Mr. Moore, I'm not sure um, what you're talking about with the $8 million to um, cut grass. The city do, does not really cut grass. They contract out for contractors to cut the right of ways. They contracted with the Genesee County Parks and Rec to um, cut the parks this year for the first time. The Genesee County Land Bank cut the land bank properties. So when you say eight million dollars, we earmark for cutting grass. I'm not sure what it is specifically that you're talking about, but we, I'm sure in our annual budget, we earmark money to pay the contractors to cut the right of ways, and they cut from the street to the sidewalk, and I think one foot in. So I'm not sure. Do, the city does not really just specifically cut yards. It's either the land bank, the county, or the city contract with. Now the city, with the black department, will earn around, do go and do Pacific. Um, complaints when people come call in and complain about grass. So, um, if you could be more specific or give me some more additional information on where you got your eight million dollars from, I'll look into it. But I don't know about it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, ma'am chair. The chair recognizes councilman in first ward. Let me make it clear to everybody listening. I hear Ms. Lewis talking about the 55 deaths since the last meeting. Ms. Lewis, I'd be willing to bet you, had something to do with canceling the last city council meeting. I've sat on this council for 10 years and I've never seen a group council meeting and then come back and talk about how many people died since the last meeting. I guarantee any city council member, including me, can introduce a resolution to spend millions of dollars. But right now, five council members, Lewis, Machette, Murphy, Worthy, and Priestley, is running this council. They canceling meetings. They refuse to show up for meetings that me and Ms. Burns or Ms. Winfrey Carter call to 
spend that half of money that record will show. So I don't like hypocrites, particularly when they utilize folks' time and then cancel meetings and refuse to show up for special meetings. We'll see if the Lord fix it. But right now, Katie Boris, I didn't know anything about your organization. I appreciate all the details that you gave me. Um, as I mentioned before, that my family has suffered opioid, I can never say it right, addiction. And um, and I, it's a hard road to develop. And if we can prevent lives, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to provide a response? Anyone else for council response? All right, seeing as how there is no one else for council response. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda. Thank you. Are there any more separations? Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes the Councilwoman in the Sixth Ward. Could you please stay with me? Yes. Thank you. What has been, it might be easier to say what has not been. What, you can separate a lot. <laughs> okay, so what has not been separated? 230365, 230429, 230432, 230433, 230433, 230433, 230433, Resolution 230. 
0319 back to finance. Is there a second? Madam Chair, I support that. All right, it has been uh, moved by the councilman in the first ward and supported by the councilwoman in the second, excuse me, the sixth ward. Is there any discussion? Very well. So it has been moved and properly seconded. The council, the chair recognizes Councilman Jackson. Yeah, this is a resolution for the James B. Kennedy Family Rights Center that's in the first ward. I talked to the pastor about it when he was here back when Pastor Harris was here. And uh, I asked to communicate more about it, and I haven't really heard anything. I don't want to slight the Kennedy Center and or the pastor because I've been wrongfully removed from these discussions primarily by um, Ms. Lewis and I'm going to say the foolish spoke. Yeah. I mean repeatedly, repeatedly I'm removed from these discussions and meetings. But what, you what, what? what is what is Lewis? What are you doing? Yeah, that's not proper to call them referring to your colleagues as foolish. That's definitely out of order. Point well taken, Mr. Mays. Would you please refer, uh, refrain from referring to your colleagues as foolish? Continue, no, please. I'm not. I'm going to continue to do it in meetings. I'm going to continue to do it on my radio show. Just like this group of five posts wrong against the rules, including you, Chairperson Michelle. Y'all have consistently for months voted wrong against groups. A privileged motion, like a point of order for a point of information, a privileged motion to correct breaches and to get information to conduct business. Ms. Worthing used them wrongfully. Mr. Murphy used them wrongfully, but yet y'all condone Ms. Lewis putting us out of meetings repeatedly. What is your point, uh, second one, uh, council person in the second word? According to, um, to council rule, Mr. May, you're not being dreamed right now. We should be discussing sending resolution 230319 to the Finance Committee. That, that is correct, Councilman Mays. I ask that you will stay to me. I'm going to another chair. Because what's happening is this. I'll appeal it first, and then I'll explain what you and Ms. Lewis is doing. So you said I'm not being germane describing my feelings about sending this motion back, and I was until I was rudely interrupted by Ms. Lewis. You condone her interruption. I appeal to rudely another chair. All right, you are appealing me stating that you are in reach of the rule of not staying germane. I'm appealing the ruling of the chair that you said I am not being relevant. That's what Jermaine means. Yes, I am. I'm All right, Mr. Mays is appealing the ruling of the chair that he is not being germane to resolution 230319. ARPA funds awarded to the James E. Kennedy Family Life Center impacts of the pandemic on the light in Ward 1. Is there a second? Support. All right, it has been moved and properly supported by the council person in the sixth ward. Yeah, Madam Chair. The chair recognizes Councilman Mays. In my argument, as I said, I made a motion to send this Kennedy Center resolution back to committee. And as I was making my argument to send it back to committee, I talked about you, Ms. Lewis, Worthy, Priestley, and others removing me out of these opera discussions wrongfully. That's relevant. Not only is it relevant to this resolution, it's been relevant on to the ones that y'all keep passing without me being here. Now you the rule that it's not relevant. It's not germane. That's what germane means, it's relevant. When we get elected to these seats representing over 8,000 people, we have the right to have input on each resolution before y'all vote and pass it. Now, I've been set up here for 10 years, and here we go, 
on a motion to send back the finance, Miss Lewis, your fearless leader, that interrupted me and told you that my conversation about being absent from these discussions ain't relevant. And you agree. And I appeal that. It is relevant. If y'all got a track record of repeatedly removing me from these conversations and then voting, and you're removing me wrongfully, like what you're trying to do now, talking about decorum, what's your name? I come out of Michigan State. I know what relevant and germane means. It means I will fight to be in my council seat, regardless of what you and Liddell Lewis and Worthy and Murphy them say. It doesn't matter to me if I win or lose. I'm making a record. And I'm making a record for the federal court in my freedom of speech and my right to represent folks. And five of y'all ain't going to take my right away because I disagree with y'all politically. Mm -hmm. You might win a battle, but you might not win the war. Hey. Now, here you didn't agree with her that me being present in these discussions ain't a relevant discussion. It is. It's not only relevant on this Kennedy Center resolution, it's relevant on all the resolutions. I've sat here for 10 years and never have been repeatedly removed from these meetings. Now, she just used the privilege most, and you condone. But when, when I do it, you're out of order. That's your first warning. You're out of order. That's your first warning. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this appeal? Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the six board council person. Thank you. Um, almost anything, anything can be drawn to relevance. And there is clearly a, a playbook to remove certain council members. Let him get his time in and not interrupt him because everybody on here is not always what you consider to be germane. And being germane to a topic can be uh, objective. You know, y'all ain't let him finish his point, draw on his point. You know, but it's just immediately, let's get him warned, let's get him out, and that's it. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's gonna cause some problems. We back from Thanksgiving. It would've been nice if everyone is killed. We know what council mates gonna do. Let him get his time, if you don't let him get his time, where everybody on here, then we get into appeals. Those appeals turn into 30 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, because everybody trying to make a point. Let them talk, let them get done. Then you complain about, it's time. We spent too much time here. And I heard y'all be all over the place up here. And not Jermaine. You know, and all sorts of things. And if we, we got a huge agenda here tonight. And this is just going to be a problem. I hope that we can allow leeway because we allow leeway for members that you get along with. There's two separate set of rules. It's the act, or maybe three, because it's the actual council rules, and it's the rules that are made up that you follow with your friends. And so there is no fairness on here. It's just not. You know, and it, we, we gotta stop. This is a big agenda. A lot of these things, meetings were canceled. They weren't canceled because I wasn't available. And I actually canceled a trip to DC to make sure I was here and didn't get noticed. Because we were told, you know, well, no one, you know, they gave a meeting and didn't tell, no one told me that y'all didn't cancel the meeting. The president or the vice president didn't call and say, you wanna have the meeting canceled? You know, you ask for things that you don't give back. You know, you're not courteous to us at all. So I think to get on with this meeting, I think we need to just let him get his time. We all get the same amount of time. Are we gonna be bogged down the rest of this night? And I figure we're gonna be here to one or maybe two o'clock in the morning, easily. Unless I think you figure if you get Councilman Mays thrown out. And after Councilman Mays gets thrown out, you like to throw me out. 
So that's just how your place would go. Amen. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this appeal? Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the council person in the second order. Thank you. So unfortunately, the way council rules are, are set up, they are not um, set up for one person to do what they wish while the rest follow the rules. Unfortunately, we almost maintained the corn and we almost followed the rules which were adopted by this council body. In terms of um, the meeting and people not being called, um, through you, Madam Chair, to the, assembly, to the clerk, excuse me, Madam Clerk, did you, um, well, did anyone from the staff reach out to the council people to check their availability regarding the, um, the November 21st meeting? Point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point, Mr. Mills? Did you just rule me out of order for not being germane? And did, what is she getting into? Did the clerk notify her? That's what I was talking about. And she thinks it's important and she asking the clerk, it must be germane. What is, what is she talking about? Is she germane right now to this the appeal? The person is being germane to the appeal. Proceed, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this is just to clarify what council person in the sixth ward said because she stated that she was not notified about the cancellation of the November 21st meeting. So, um, so Madam, so through you, request Madam Clerk. What is your request? It was through you, Madam Chair, the speaker. I found out online, social media. Yeah. So um, that was an improper request because, yeah, that wasn't a question, but I'm going back to uh, you. Please, so please continue, Councilman. Mm -hmm. oh. The staff did reach out to the people that I had that that I knew or said or heard that they weren't gonna be here. So once we hit six, I'm sorry, yeah, we hit five people weren't gonna be here. And then six ultimately. So yes, after that we stopped making calls. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. So I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Um, request for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Through you so you just made my point that that discussion is relevant and germane. Would that be a fair statement? Proceed, Ms. Lewis. Thank you. So with that being said, going back to the, uh, to the appeal at hand, Mr. Mays was calling colleagues foolish, and then he began to speak about getting put out of meetings. He was only going off into left field when we are on a specific resolution Request dealing with the Kennedy Center. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Uh, through you to Ms. Lewis, can I make it have my opinion that it's foolish to cancel me when we got business stacked up? Is that relevant? Definitely. Yeah. Proceed, Ms. Lewis. I definitely will, because that was an improper request for information. So, yeah, um, so as we move right. forward, just wanted to state that we are on the resolution discussing sending the Kennedy Life Center to the Finance Committee, and hopefully we can speak exclusively to that resolution. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak during this appeal? The chair recognizes the third board council meeting. Thank you. Um, I also thought that this resolution was dealing with the ARPA funds award for the James E. Kennedy Family Life Center impact of the pandemic on Black War One. <clears throat> My colleague in the first war, uh, Councilman Mays, did a uh, motion that was supported, I believe, by Councilwoman Burns to send this back to finance. So what I was listening and looking forward to was the conversation about the reasoning why we, my colleagues wanted to send this back to finance. In my opinion, I think it's personal. But I'm not gonna get in that, because then that's me assuming what I think somebody else may be. And then I know uh, Councilman Woman Burns uh, read that uh, rule to me that she read to 
the rest of my colleagues when we assumed the subject. So I don't want to assume. But if we just stay germane to the topic, the resolution, I heard my colleague call my name out and talk about whatever he wanted to talk about that didn't have nothing to do with his resolution. And all we saying is stick to the topic at hand. The topic at hand is this resolution. You made a motion. You were second by your colleague to send this back to finance. Stick to why you want to move it back to finance versus you giving your opinion of what you think about why the colleagues, whatever, 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 and you going off topic. And here we are already starting off. And it, it seems like every time my colleague in the first ward is here, we all we always in this right here. And then people talk about we just be trying to pass resolutions. No, we don't be trying to pass resolutions, we be trying to get stuff done. And we do our homework before we get here. So some of us read, some of us have computers, some of us do have a computer. So when some of us may not got no computer, maybe you need to focus on trying to get a computer and you can start reading your information okay, before you get to the meeting. But like I said before, here we are in an appeal because we want to stick strictly to the resolution, but because my colleague wants to identify and characterize us as whatever he think and based on whatever he think, his ideology or what he think about us, we supposed to sit here and take it. And if we don't take it, we supposed to just be quiet, don't say nothing, and let him talk three minutes, and let him make derogatory comments towards us, and, and take it, because our colleague, or some of our colleagues think we should ought to take it, well, some of us ain't taking it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this appeal? Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this appeal? Seeing as how there's no one else that would like to speak to this appeal, I will go ahead and take my time. So, we are discussing Resolution 230319, Opera Funds Award, James E. Kennedy Family Life Center, the impacts of, pandemic, of the pandemic on Light on Ward 1. This was properly motioned and seconded to move back to finance. That is what the discussion should be, why we are moving this back to finance. Um, we can sit here and try to make anything germane. I can make the weather outside germane as to why, but at the end of the day, the reality is we're discussing this and we need to stay on topic for this. I would also ask that um, my colleagues refrain from name calling so that we can keep moving forward. The onus on all of us as adults to stay in a meeting, key word there, onus is on us to stay in a meeting. It's not on us to make excuses for behaviors that are not acceptable when you are in a professional work environment. So I would ask that everyone just stay respectful, that everyone would direct your comments or anything else to the chair and not to one another, that we will refrain from name calling, and that if we are talking about resolution 230-319 and why it needs to go back to finance, that we speak specifically to that and stay on topic. Roll call, Madam Clerk. What's your point? Can you um, repeat what we vote yes or no on before I vote? Yes. Thank you. We are voting on the appeal. And so um, I said that Mr. Mays was not saying Jermaine to resolution 230319. So a vote of yes would mean you agree with the chair. A vote of yes would mean that you want to overturn the chair, and a vote of no means you agree with the chair. Mm -hmm. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Lewis. No. No. Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Wednesday Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Shad? No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is three yes, five no. The vote is three yes, five 
yes, I know the ruling of the chair stands. I believe Mr. May still has some time left. Um, speaking to resolution 230319, Mr. Mays, you have the floor. Yeah, I'm going to finish with having the floor. And this is a Kennedy Center resolution dealing with our funds to send back the Finance Committee meeting. Finance Committee meeting was canceled last week. Oh, no. These things should be discussed in Finance Committee meeting and committee meetings. I'm going to stick with for that. I think it's foolish to cancel those meetings. Now, y'all can throw me out for having my opinion, but I'm going to have it. I'm not going to shy away from it, and you four or five people ain't going to fool in me. It was foolish to cancel a meeting on Tuesday. Thanksgiving wasn't the Thursday. I and I got to notice that the meeting was canceled, and we got work piled up, particularly Alpha Fund money, and this is one of them. Yep. I know what's happening in the first ward, and I know the pastor read at Kennedy Center, and we've been talking. Yeah. So I made the uh, motion to send it back to finance, where the stuff should be discussed anyway. It's foolish not to. So y'all not going to bully and intimidate me with these bogus ruling come out. What's Jermaine? Is Jermaine to talk about cancellation and meeting the Thank you, Mr. Mays. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? The chair recognizes the councilwoman in the sixth ward. Thank you. Um, I believe the Kennedy Center, the Arthur Advisory Committee had uh, turned them down. I don't believe they were approved to even move forward. Uh, is that right? Do you, Madam Chair, to Councilwoman Priestley? Is that correct? My, hold on just a second. I know, I, I had so many computer problems this past. Stop the clock. I had I've got the floor. Um, so here is my concern. We have the advisory committee that did the work, went over everything. We have nothing to go uh, over. They re they did not recommend it, recommend to give them any money. I believe that was the recommendation. Whoa. And now we're sending it to be approved. Always correct. It was not approval. Okay, so the Kennedy Life Center was turned down. Uh, they voted, the 12 member body voted no to approve this. But now it is before this council to approve. And we really have not vet this because we did not have council meetings, and meetings were canceled. So, I mean, for that reason, we have a responsibility as a council. We're passing something that the recommendation from the ARPA Advisory Committee has stated no, do not give them funds. So why are we giving them funds? If they did their job, we're supposed to trust in what they stated. And we don't have any notes through you, Madam Chair, you? to the city clerk. Sorry, excuse me. Um, excuse me, can you pause our time? Thank you. Do you, Madam Clerk, to the chair, have you received any notes stating why, because you are the official record keeper, or minutes, why the Kennedy Center was given a no, do not fund from the ARPA Advisory Committee? Yeah. No. So we you have nothing on record that would state their recommendation. Is there any digital? or any uh, papers, anything given to you, nothing. Okay. okay, so we're about to give them $50,000. It has not been vetted, it has been turned down. Uh, the recommendation was no to give them money, but we're pushing this through <coughs> to pass this, and the committee stated to not give them money. I mean, this doesn't make sense. I mean, we we just given out money and not even paying attention to even what the organization, what the 12 member body that I didn't agree with. I didn't agree with how they were formed. And now we're gonna give them money, and they stated, do not give them money. Whoa. I mean, we're looking really shady up here. <laughs> really shady. <laughs> this is just not good business. 
Thank you, is there anyone else who would like to speak out? The chair recognizes the councilwoman in the ninth ward. This is in the first ward, so council member Hayes wants to postpone this and doesn't want to do it. That's, you know, that's in his ward. Um, however, as um, another council person said we're doing shady things up here, um, that does speak to our motives, and, and it's untrue. Um, just because the 12 member body didn't recommend uh, a certain project does not mean that we can't fund it. Um, we have our ex kids, all kinds of things that they didn't apply. They did? Okay. Well, there have been other uh, organizations that did not apply that got money. Um, I think this should be something that we think about. So if it bothers you that the committee did not recommend any money to it, then simply vote no. Um, and if it doesn't bother you, you think it's a worthy cause, then simply vote yes. No need to uh, speak to the motives of other members. Um, simply state, I'm not voting on this um, in support of this because. I think that's what we need to get to point of order. as a council. Point. What is your point? Madam Chair, the council person is speaking to the motive as to we should vote yes or we should vote no. Which is Robert's Rules 43.21. Robert. Let it go. Proceed, Councilwoman. Yeah, that didn't make sense, but um, what I'm saying is each council person has the right to vote yes or no according to their own uh, values, morals, and decision making process. So, no one here is shady for voting for what they think is right. Um, and when I said simply vote yes or no, speak to your own motives. State why you want to do this or not want to do this and move on. We need to stop attacking any and all other members uh, because you don't like something. It's, it's not professional, it's not adult-like, uh, and no one changes their mind based on insults and, um, you know, just someone saying that, oh, you, you're doing this because you're shady. No one changes their mind because of that. Request Thank for information. I'm well, done. Who are you as a speaker, Miss Worthy? If, if it's not professional, to attack other members. Why did you and Ms. Riddell Lewis call a press conference and attack Mr. Me? Mays, Mr. Mays, you weren't recognized, and then also please. Point of order. What's your point? When you call the privilege motion. You, you did not give me an opportunity, you started speaking. Okay, so Just give me an opportunity. I, I was going to recognize you. Now I know. Mr. Mays, you have the floor. Point of order. Mr. Mays, you have what's your point? My point is, if I do a privilege motion, why don't you recognize it immediately and then not come back and try to penalize me and say I wouldn't recognize Mr. Mays, I am chairing this meeting, and I was about to recognize you, but you immediately began speaking. I would ask that all members give me the opportunity to recognize you. You will not be ignored. Your points will be recognized. Point of order. Mr. Mays, what is your point? See if that carries through throughout your chairmanship with your other colleagues. Point of order, Miss Worthy. Well, that's not a proper point of order. Thank you. The floor. Thank you, Miss Worthy. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes. Uh, the chair recognizes the third work council. Thank you. So here's here's what my problem is. I'll support my colleague in the first ward and send this back to finance. It is in his ward. If this is what he wants, I will support it. But what I won't do is continue to not make a decision on this resolution. We either go vote it up or we go vote it down. And then to the point of um, the 12 member body opera committee, um, some of us didn't support what they love with the opera committee. I was one of them, but they was for, they made recommendations. So when a resolution comes before me, just because the opera 
committee didn't vote for a resolution or vote to give somebody some money ain't the end all. If that's the case, what, what's the purpose of us having to vote on resolutions if we have the power to vote it up or vote it down or overrule the operative recommendations at the committee? That's what we're here for. So even if they don't um, vote to give somebody some money, that don't mean they they not they they not gonna get none because this committee. So on one hand, either we against the committee and we want to do what we want to do as a council and and, so, and do what we feel what we was elected to do, or we we for it. One of the two. I mean, at first, one of for the committee. Now all of a sudden. Because the committee didn't um, support or didn't recommend somebody get some money, they don't get none at all. That ain't how it works. We get the, the final say, and if we want to support somebody or don't support somebody, it's up to us. So I, I don't really care whether the committee supported or didn't support. I don't even know who they is, to tell you the truth. So I don't even be thinking about the committee when I look at resolutions to help support somebody. But if that's if we if that's what we doing and we going based on because the committee said or whatever, it's what the council said. If we say we want to support somebody, that's just what it is. And then the mayor can veto it if that's what he want to do. But um, I'll support moving this back to finance, but I won't support, um, keep on, I think we need to just go on and vote it up and vote it down. And I appreciate um, my um, colleague, Dr. Lewis for um, bringing these resolutions and sticking to the specific categories so that we can um, get this over with and get this money out. It's been a long time. Now it's in our hands, and it's up to us what we want to do. And I'm ready to vote. About that. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes the four four councilwoman. Yes, um, Madam Chair, I agree that we should vote it up or vote it down. It's been sent back a couple of times. It's been floated around here for probably six weeks, and it's time to make a decision on it. Whether the committee approved, uh, voted to approve it, I tend to want to go with um, with organizations that the committee approved, but they didn't always, they made some questionable decisions. And this is for the first ward. And you know, I'm familiar with the area. I grew up in the area where this lo this um, where the Kennedy Center Center is located at, and I support a neighborhood cleanup. So I'm not going to support sending it back because I want to get I want to get these things done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else, Madam Madam Chair? Uh, the chair recognizes the councilwoman in the second ward. Thank you. So because the Kidding Life Center is in the first ward, I'll send it back to finance because that's under the jurisdiction of Mr. Eric Haynes. So I'm totally uh, in favor of obviously uh, Pastor Reed in the audience or any representative for Pastor Reed. So only thing we have to go with is, is Mr. Reed, not even Mr. Reed, but uh, Mr. May's selection of uh, sending it back to finance. I'm perfectly okay with that. But again, I echo the sentiments of Councilman Murphy. Either we are going to vote it up or down. Either you're with the opera committee or you're not. And I've stated on several occasions, several occasions, this was even before the city was sued for the, um, the ARPA community um, committee. This was before then. We stated that that committee is an opportunity for the citizens to voice their opinion of where the money can go. Next, the administration gave their opinion where the money can go. This council has the final say. So regardless of what everyone else say, we take it as a suggestion, we solidify that result right here tonight. And so because we have a lot to do and we want to move on, um, I'm going to let me call the question. Yeah, call for the question. Support. All right, uh, let's call the question that's properly supported. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Murphy Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Michelle? Yes. Mr. Foster Johnson? 
Swerven? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Ms. Lewis? Yes. The vote is six yes, two no. The vote is six yes, two no. Um, we will now vote on whether to send two, resolution 230319 back to finance. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Murphy Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Michelle? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. The vote is six yes, two no. The vote is six yes, two no. Resolution 230319 has been sent back to finance. All right, moving on to resolution 230320. Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, the Chair recognizes Second Ward Councilwoman. Thank you. I move that we send resolution 230320 to Council for approval. Support. All right, it has been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes Council Manning. Before this meeting started, Mr. Murphy attempted to tell me that this was in the first ward as well. Uh, it says third ward, but he attempted to tell me it's in the first ward, and I told him don't try to talk business with me politely off record when you steady threatening and talking crazy to me yeah, off record. Right. So if this is in the first ward, I'm going to end up making an amended motion and send it right back to finance with the Kennedy Center. My rationale is these resolutions for wards is all over the place. And I want a comprehensive look at the first ward. I've seen resolutions dealing with $10,000 under the jurisdiction of the council person in that ward, 50000 here. They're all over the place. And so, you know, I'm going to fight for the first ward, JJ. I'm going to talk to Pastor Reed. I'm going to try to get a Kennedy Center 50000 I know that's right. We're dealing with $94 million. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not tripping over 50000 but the project that he going to do ain't going to start in the summertime. This, um, kept this, this Sylvester Broom thing, I don't mind giving them 50000 yeah. But I'm going to see what they going to do. When stuff is in the ward I represent, they say what they want. Five people can vote how they want. But I'm going to know everything moving in the first ward. Wait. And I'm going to know the details of it. But this group can pass what they want. They can do whatever they want. That's the point I've been trying to tell people for months. This money's been sitting here. I've been called two, three special meetings and they don't show up. Mm -hmm. Committee meetings been canceled. Oh, you can't talk about that. That's not Jermaine. You can't talk about that. I'm talking about what I want. No. When I'm trying to get million dollars worth of business done. I'm talking about the 15 million I want increase for people to get roofs on their houses, vinyl sides, windows. I'm talking about that. What? I'm not going to jibble 94 million dollars away, a million here, two million there. They put me out, I got to get with the staff and say to me, what did they vote on while I was gone? I've been sitting here for 10 years. Mr. Mays, I will request that you remain germane to resolution 230. I'll the ruling of the chair. You yeah. interrupted me, you're out of order. I I'm actually not out of order. At any point in time, the chair can call you to order. I appeal the ruling of the chair. It has been Your time is to ask point of order. You are not chairing this point meeting. Of what order. is your point, Mr. Mays? Point of order. What is your point, Mr. Mays? Your job is to ask immediately. Is there a second to the appeal? Yeah. That part. A 
as I am the one chairing the meeting, is there a second to Mr. Mays' appeal? I'll support this appeal. Thank you, it has been moved and properly seconded by the councilwoman in the fifth ward. Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. When you interrupt me and I got the floor, I don't care what your colleagues say, you're wrong. When I'm talking about first ward projects and millions of dollars in the procedure we're going through, it's germane and relevant. It might not be what you want to hear, but you better go ask the professor at U of M in Michigan State what germane means. You better get a dictionary or Google it because you out of order. And I want to give you a warning for doing that. You remind me of Liddell Lewis. Yeah. Y'all be out of order interrupting me. Now my time was ticking. I was about done. I got the right to say I want to look at this comprehensively. I got the right to say that I've attempted to call a special meeting. I'll attempt to call one next week and see if you show up. That's all relevant. It's Jermaine. Did y'all learn a new word? Jermaine. That means relevant. Got something to do with it. If y'all don't know it means got something to do with it, you better go back to junior high, high school. Please. Understand you out of order interrupting me when I got the floor. Now, your colleagues can condone it. And we can do this dance all night. But on each offer resolution, I'm going to talk about the meetings I done called, meetings canceled. I'm hearing my colleague talking about we need to get this done. We should have had it done months ago. Uh -huh. If y'all show up for the meetings and quit canceling them, you can't talk about that. That's in the past. That's not your man. Well, let's talk about the future. Ms. Winfrey Collins, Ms. Burns, I'm going to call a special meeting in the future and see if they show up. I'm going to see if word can come. Liddell Lewis, and you, Ms. Machette. And I might call it at 10 in the morning or 4 in the evening. Specifically to discuss this opera line. Y'all need to leave me the hell alone. Because you're not going to change the way I talk about this money. And y'all can throw me out and divide the money up without me. But we're going to talk about it in court. I got the right to discuss this money. I got the right to beat me in on it. Y'all not going to buffalo me. Keep throwing me out, ruling me out of order for talking about chopping up some money. It's my job to talk about. And it's my job to tell if y'all missing me. Um, you can't talk about us. Y'all the ones who miss the meetings. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this appeal? Is there anyone else? Yes. The chair recognizes the councilman in the third ward. Really, to my colleague in the first war, you really come across. Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy, direct it to me. Well, yeah. nice. okay. this, this this meeting is coming across as um, I want to have to look at you while I'm talking, but I, I hear what you say. Mm -hmm. um, but this 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 meeting already is. My colleague in the first war just seemed so um, offensive when it comes down to if we want to stick to the subject matter and then you are going off talking about stuff that happened a long time ago and it's taking up time in this meeting and to just talk at your colleague and kudos to you um, Madam Chair of the Special Affairs, this is your first meeting, chairing the meeting, so um, I know for your first time chairing, you want to make sure you're trying to get it right. And for us to know that this is your first time with some of us, to know that this is your first time chairing on council, 
and then to have people coming at you the way they're coming at you, I want to make sure that I'm not part of the problem and part of the solution. And doing what I can to support you and your role as the new chair of the special affairs. And it's unfortunate that when we had an agenda item, we can't stick to the agenda item. And there's always got to be somebody's characteristic of how somebody is, what they didn't do 10 days, 10 years ago, and how long that is, is, ain't even pertaining to the subject matter. So I support you, and I'll do what I can to support you as long as you're doing what's right and try to move this meeting forward because some of us really want to get the work done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? All right, seeing as how there's no one else that would like to speak on this appeal, um, I'll take my time. We are discussing resolution 230-320. Our funds awarded to Sylvester Groom Empowerment Village impacts of the pandemic on blight in Ward 3. And so at this time, then we are supposed to be discussing um, sending this back to finance and why. I would ask that all of my colleagues remain on that topic specifically that we would not veer off into speaking to voters, veer off into speaking to past events. Today is a new day. Let us discuss what is happening in this meeting, what is happening in real time. Stay focused on why this needs to go back to finance. With that said, roll call, Madam Clerk. Uh, just so we're clear, a vote of no upholds the ruling of the chair that Mr. Mays was not staying your main to resolution 230320 and a vote of yes would overturn the ruling of the chair. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Ms. Burns. Ms. No. Ms. Worthen? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Ms. Priestley? No. The vote is two yes, five no. The vote is two yes, five no. The ruling of the chair stands. Mr. Mays, you did have some time left. Yeah, I'm going to continue to say the same thing on each of these outcomes. I'm going to continue to articulate about council and this meetings. I'm going to continue to articulate about calling a special meeting. And all y'all can do is wrongfully throw me out. It'll be a day in court where we review whether or not my conversation is relevant to my vote. I said at the beginning of this discussion, the motion is to send it to council for approval. I say it's in the first board, just like the Kennedy Senate. I said I'd make an amendment to the motion to send it back to finance and try to do all of my stuff comprehensively. That's what I said and that's what I meant. And I'm gonna say this before I make that motion. Y'all not gonna bully me. You're not gonna tell me how to talk. <laughs> And watch when I call a point of order later in this meeting when I tell y'all how to talk. I'm going to see if y'all rule that that's not relevant or germane. One thing for sure, they didn't tell Martin Luther King how to talk. They didn't tell Malcolm X how to talk. They didn't tell they ain't telling Farrakhan how to talk. And they ain't telling Eric Mays how to talk. Yeah. Y'all got the wrong one. But I'm gonna see if y'all tell each other how to talk. You're not gonna tell me how to talk. I ain't studying. I make an amendment to the motion to send this one also back to finance in the first ward if it is such a ward as it is. And I so move. Wait. There is a motion on the floor to send resolution 230, excuse me, there's an amended motion to send resolution 230320. Back to finance, is there a second? Madam Chair. Oh, yes. All right, the motion. Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, I'm going out on the floor. All right. 
The motion has been moved and properly seconded by the councilwoman in the fifth ward. Uh, the chair recognizes the second ward councilwoman. Call the question. Support. All right, the, the question has been called by the councilwoman in the second ward and supported by the councilwoman in the ninth ward. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Michelle. No, sorry. Ms. Oh. Ms. Michelle. No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Wendy Carter? No. The vote is four yes, three no. The vote is four yes, three no. Madam Chair. Mr. Mays? Madam Chair, I don't know why Ms. Lewis would rush like a foot race to try to have no discussion on the motion I made. That ain't even what democracy looks like. A motion is made and seconded. There's discussion. I can see a discussion go on long. Then you call for the question. But this is getting to be ridiculous. Now, let me make it perfectly clear to you five. Whatever y'all vote, that's y'all business. You can vote the whole 50 million that's left. And I don't have to agree with you on how to spend it. But I'm going to say what I want to say. For months, I've been articulating, Mr. Moore, increase that five million to 20 million to fix these people's roofs, windows, vinyl siding, furnaces, remodeling kitchens, home improvements. For months, I've been articulating, let's see how much lost revenue we gonna have because we might be running budget deficits in this fiscal year. We already know y'all have voted to approve a garbage contract and it's going to be five million. We know that. I've also articulated it's getting close to Christmas. I would spend 2.5 million on another round of premium pay for employees. So lost revenue, home improvements. I'm going to articulate premium pay, pay for employees and 10 million for businesses. Include Morris Peterson's downtown high rise bill. Oh, yeah. no. I can see the money y'all want for opioid. I can see the money the Kennedy Center want and the Broome Center want. But I'm not going to be ruled out of order trying to articulate what has been put into the meeting. And I don't mind getting through out illegally, wrongfully, over and over, talking about I ain't relevant by five folks that don't represent me in the ward I represent. That's a political difference. The charter says it's illegal to discriminate politically. But they do. And don't want you to talk about their indiscrepancies. If you criticize government or petition government here, you're out of order. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? The chair recognizes the councilman in the third ward. I, I want to, to, to the um, public that's um, listening and watching this, I want y'all to see. Uh, we in this amended motion, so I want y'all to watch how my colleague in the first ward does. He take the, uh, when we do a regular motion, you get two rounds of five minutes. He take his first round of five minutes, then if we want to talk, we can't talk because then he make a motion uh, to do an amended motion. When he do the amended motion, we only got one round of three minutes, so he use up his five minutes and then don't allow space for us to do our own. What is your point, Mr. May? So if he can criticize me, I still sure can criticize poor y'all, correct? Mr. Murphy? Point, point of order. What is your point? My point is that is like the fifth plus time that Mr. May have used a privileged motion to obtain the floor. 
And according to our council rules, that's an order for one. Thank you. Councilman Murphy, please proceed. Thank you. So I just want to talk about the motion and the amendments. So when we want to discuss these things, how what what is being played, just watch, just watch the room. But um, I won't be supporting moving this. Um, know where I want to go and support this um, Sylvester Broom and Providence. And we've been um, beating this horse to death. Only thing, they changed their boundaries. Their office is in the Sylvester Broom Center. Sylvester Broom Center is serving as their fiduciaries. Their boundaries is part of the first ward and part of the third ward, but on here it just say third ward. Um, there's something that um, uh, Ms. Green, Ms. Shelley Sparks Green, probably could make uh, uh, work on with the um, resolution. It's, it's nothing that we need to um, stop this vote. I attended their meeting at Foss Avenue Baptist Church last week. We talked about this situation. I'm ready to vote so they can get some money. They're doing great things. And at least they ain't got to worry about this. Even when we vote for this resolution, ain't no telling how long it's going to take for them to even see some money coming their way. Because I don't know what goes on as far as behind the scenes, as far as them having to sign the contract. So even though we voting on it tonight, don't mean they're going to get some money tomorrow. So I'm willing to, to move forward. I hope I can get my colleagues to support moving forward with this resolution because they've been waiting for a long time. As a council person, I did reach out to them and I was one of the ones who moved this back to finance because I needed to find out some more information. I called them up on the phone, I talked to Marion, I talked to the um, young man, Mr. Um, Patrick McNeil, and asked the questions that I needed to ask. So I vetted what I needed to do as a council person to make a decision how I need to vote on this. That's why I knew it was in the first and the third ward because they told me the boundary areas. Only thing they offers is in the Broom Center and the Broom Center is serving as the fiduciaries. Other than that, I am not interested in moving this back to finance. And I've done my homework as a council person and reached out to these folks prior to me coming to this meeting. So despite what people think, we just want to vote on things. I do my homework. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the image? All right, seeing so there's no one else that would like to speak, uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. May? Yes. Ms. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Murphy Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. And the vote is three yes, five no. The vote is three yes, five no. That amendment fails. Um, we are now going back to the original motion. Madam Chair, point of order. What's your point, Mr. Mays? We're in the first round of the original motion, correct? Correct. Thank you, it Mr. Mays. It is two rounds, correct. correct? Thank you, Mr. Mays. We, are, we will now return to the first round discussion of the original motion. Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes the second word, Council Woman. Call for question. Support. The question has been called and properly supported by the ninth board council person. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Irving. Yes. Mr. Mays. No. Ms. Lewis. Yes. Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Wendy Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Michette? Yes. The vote is five yes, three no. The vote is five yes, three no. We will now vote uh, on the motion to send resolution 2332. Yes, sir. What is your point, Mr. Mays? That motion fails, don't it? The call for the question motion fails, does it? Oh, I'm sorry, no, the call for the question um, passed. Excuse me. No, no it fails. Point of order. 
Point of order. I'm in a point of order, ma'am. Uh -huh. I'm waiting on the ruling. Attorney Kim. Wait, now what? You need from the rule here. Just give me one second. Just one second. We'll get your answer, Mr. Banks. Beg your pardon. I said, well, we're waiting on Attorney Kim, and we'll get your answer. Rule 16.1, um, the relevant part says that a two-thirds vote of the council members present, but no less than a majority of the council members elect is required for the motion to carry. What did you say? We have request for information from you to the city attorney if I may. What is your request, Mr. Mays? So two-thirds of eight is what? Yes, sir, it's 5.3. You can't have a point third of a person, so it's five. It's five. It's five. Two thirds of eight is five. Go. It might be five uh, point something. If it's five point something. Point of information. What is zero? Um, does the speaker know that 5.3 is below half of a person? So it would be rounded it's down as a number to 5. If it were 0.5 or above, point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point, Mr. Didn't Benson? you chastise me for not asking and didn't implore me? And I told you I would point of, I'm in a point of order. What is your point? My is point is, did you one? chastise me for speaking without you giving me the floor? Ain't that what Ms. Worthington just did with Mi Mr. Mays, I apologize. Maybe my voice was too low. I did recognize her. I did. Your pardon? I said maybe my voice was too low. I did recognize her. I don't know what she said. She was recognized, Mr. Mays. The audience will refrain from speaking out. Oh, gotcha. Request for information. Um, um, I call it a point of order. Oh, okay. what, what is your point of order, Ms. Lewis? So not a problem. So my, my point of order is, um, according to our rules, a request for information is when um, someone is making a note to the speaker to help them decide on um, the next vote. And what Councilwoman Worthy did was she gave information that helped decide on the matter at hand, so she was not out of order. Just wanted to clarify that because that's what Mr. Mays was saying initially. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I, however, did not understand that to be his. I, I think I thought he was saying, asking if I recognized her, and I was explaining to him I did recognize her. I might not have said it loud enough. Um, what is your point, Councilwoman Burns? It actually should be a point of order. I sit right here next to you. I did not hear you recognize her. That's fine. That is your first warning. That is your first warning. All right. And with that, I'm going to go to the Point of order. Your job is to ask us here in a second. Point of order. Yes, Mr. Mays, what is your point? I immediately appealed the decision of the chair. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Is there a second? Is, is there a second? I support that. Thank you. It's been moved and properly seconded by Councilwoman Burns. Is there a discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Mays. He wasn't the only one that showed expression. And that is your second one. Point of order. That is the second one. 
appeal. You cannot appeal in the middle of the appeal, Mr. Bass. I have to do it immediately. You point cannot appeal order. in the middle of an appeal. Point of order. What is your point? You gave him a second warning. I appealed immediately a decision. You cannot appeal in the I middle of an appeal. Him. Yes, you can. You, you cannot. Point of order. You must do it immediately. You cannot appeal in the middle of an appeal. Any decision under council rules, any decision at a chair can be appealed. You cannot appeal in the middle of an appeal. I appeal the ruling of the chair. Any decision. Chair can be appealed. Um, he has been removed from the meeting. He has been removed from the meeting, yes. He is being disorderly. He has been removed, Officer Metcalf. Officer Metcalf, he has been appealed. Yes, yes. Point of board. The person actually that I think you're we're in this point. I didn't even think it was that person. I actually thought it was Ariel. No, actually, I'm here on who I'm here on who I'm here on. Madam Chair, no. Madam Chair, it's an appeal on the floor. Absolutely, and it's been pop. The, the first one has been properly seconded. We will move into your first appeal. And the second one is appeal. Uh, you cannot appeal in the middle of an appeal. I'm going to cite the rules that say you can. You ready? Okay, go ahead. Point of order cannot be ignored. This is rule 25.4. And this is council rules. They take precedence over Robert's rules. A point of order cannot be ignored by the providing office. Mm -hmm. A ruling of agreement out of order or disagreement. Denial must be different. All debate and talking must cease. The one that I'm looking for is going to tell you about his appeal. And that's why you call him Officer Metcalf premature. But this guy got the same lawyer back up. Make sure you get my camera to me before you leave because they forcing you out. Whoa! Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Let's refer to the Z. Let's, let's refer to the Z. Let's, 
you ask me to let you finish yours. It says, all questions arising under these groups and general parliamentary practices subject to an appeal. All questions, it didn't say some or none during an appeal. It says all questions is subject to an appeal. All questions arising are subject to an appeal. And that's 1.2. City Attorney, could you please wait? Sure, Rule 1.2 speaks generally to appeals. Uh, it's roughly parallels Robert's Rules of Order, Section 24.1. Um, but Robert's Rules of Order, Section 24. Mr. Bates does not have the floor to get out loud, and no one can hear because they're loud. Point of order matters. Yeah. I, I'm with, I, I understand, Mr. Mays. Attorney Kim, would you please continue? We have to take a five-minute Robert's Rules of Order 24.3 is addressing a specific situation that's not covered by the City Council rules. And what 24.3 says. What is your request, Mr. Mays? To the City Attorney, 1.2 covers all questions, doesn't it? 1.2 covers appeals generally, but it does not address the specific situation of an appeal being raised with while an appeal is pending. Um, through you, Madam Chair, point of request for information to the attorney general. What is your request, Mr. Mays? It does Mace? address it. 1.2 says all questions. That addresses all questions, doesn't it? All right, thank you, Mr. Mays. We'll let Attorney Kim continue. Rule 24, or Section 24.3 of Robert's Rules of Order says that if a point of order is raised while an appeal is pending, there is no appeal from the chair's decision. Request for information. Council rules supersede Robert's rules. If they are covered specifically. And they're specific to all questions arising. That is incorrect. No, it, no it's not. You're, I'm afraid you are reading the Point of, point of request for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Uh, Attorney Kim, we can disagree with you, can All means all, doesn't it? All right, um, well, Attorney Kim has stated that we cannot do an appeal in the middle of an appeal, so what we'll okay, can do I'll appeal that decision at a check. You cannot appeal when there's already an appeal happening, Mr. Mays. All decisions decided by the chair are subject to appeal based upon you council rules. You cannot appeal in the middle of an appeal, Mr. All Mays. All decisions of the chair is appealable. So we're going to go with the appeal that we can do, and that was that you were appealing me calling the audience member to order. I want the record to reflect that I got two appeals outstanding. The one given the second warning and the one that you decided all things are not subject to appeal. Your decisions are not subject to appeal. It's not what we'll I said. That. And so we will go, we are now in the first appeal about calling the audience member to order. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I was in the middle of discussion when I made five well, then I'll start discussion if you're shaking your head no. Mr. Mays, are you asking for the floor? Yeah, I've been asked for it. The chair recognizes Councilman Mays. Well, I'm glad the chair recognizes Councilman Mays because they showed him recognized words. You've been chairing for a little bit of this meeting and you already have shown me discriminatory practice. R.L. Mitchell, or whoever you gave the warning to, wasn't the only person who reacted. The videographer, I never heard him get a first warning, and then you gave him a second warning and had Metcalf remove him. I say what I don't recall. I do know you gave R.L., I thought, one warning. So here you just threw the public out and caused chaos in your first meeting. And you take in your marching orders, it seemed like from Ms. Lewis. Because Ms. Lewis gave you a bogus interpretation trying to protect evil words. 
and you bought it too. Miss Miss Byron says she's sitting right next to you and didn't hear you do this word in the floor. Yes. That's what they reacted to, because they were looking. I reacted to it because I was looking. This is the second time that I think I've caught you telling an outright lie. It's two things that I don't appreciate in life. It's a thief and a liar. Now, I could be wrong, but everybody ain't wrong. The other week, you talked about me standing up and then changed it and lied and said you weren't talking to me. And I was the only one standing up out of my seat. So that's twice. If I catch you lying one more time, that's going to be three in my book. I can't stand a thief and a liar. I had a detective call me today, Detective Banks. Do you want to pursue an assault and battery complaint against Liddell Lewis? I said, call and talk to him. And call me back and tell me what she said. See, this ain't no game that we playing up here. This is for real. Attorney Kim gonna tell you the plain language of 1.2. All don't mean all. Ms. Burns, when did all not mean all? Mr. <laughs> Miss, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Woodbury got a win that all not mean all. Duh. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this appeal? Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes the Councilwoman in the sixth ward. Thank you. Um, you gave a warrant, two warnings. You didn't deal with the first one. You absolutely did not give her the floor. You did not. You, you simply did not. You did not give her the floor. And so if you're operating on how the chair rules, the chair has a responsibility to move fairly and truthfully. You didn't give her the floor, she took the floor. And I understand she was clearing it up, which is what was happening. Uh, her information was valid, but you, you, you covered for it. Now as far as the gallery or the residents, the people who are attending, you absolutely singled out one person. You singled out one individual because there were multiple individuals who were talking. And the loudest person, which you were given also a warning to, I don't know if it's a secondary, but Mr. Mitchell, who we know that um, he should be covered underneath the Americans with Disabilities Act because he has a disability. But there were multiple people. You absolutely singled out one person. You did. And you gave him another, another warning. Having power to chair, if you're not using it wisely, is dangerous. If you're not using it wisely, you roll your eyes at me. And I'm just trying it out with the meaning to be fair. You gave me a look that it was an up and down, like I could have been singed and set on fire. You know, and I think you just got to be fair. Because the residents, you know, people are gonna just, you have to just kind of step back because it's gonna make it very hard and difficult for our next meeting. And the chair is not gonna always be right. No attorney is going to always be right because we're human. But you absolutely singled that individual out, which I know there are some prior issues, but he wasn't even the loudest person. I mean, I heard, you could hear, it's not that many people in here. So not dealing with the warning, with the appeal, and then you appeal the second time. It's not giving people a due process. It's not being fair. What you're doing is ruling with the iron fist, and it's just not fair. I get we don't like some people <coughs> that or have issues, but you have to still be fair. He didn't even get to his appeal, then you called, you weaponized the police to have him thrown out. And this is a pattern again. You weaponized the police to have him thrown out even before his appeal could be heard. And you did not give, when they made the noise, it was, you know, when I commented, you did not give her the floor. 
You just, you say we want to joyful. You say we want to, don't double down on the wrong. You know, we got a long night. We, we get the appeals already. Thank you. Is there anyone who would else who would like to manage chair? Um, the chair recognizes the councilwoman in the ninth ward. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to keep this short, but here we are. It is 6.30, so two hours in. Um, we've gotten to a couple things, and it's appeal after appeal. So there are members of this body that are upset that um, someone in the audience got out, but it's not because he wasn't at fault and he wasn't um, that it wasn't he was screaming so there's no <laughs> he was shouting out there's no doubt about it you can play the tape back um, it's that he's I don't know if he's employed by Mr. Mays or what is happening but he takes video for him point on other matter Chad what is your point Mr. Mays uh, is that a dig? She's saying she don't know if somebody is employed by me or is she really saying something? Okay. And if you're going to let that slide. Ms. Worthy, I would ask that we uh, refrain from guessing on anyone's employment. Okay, well, I'm going to assume that he's employing this man to video us um, to post it on TikTok. Request for information. What is your request for information? Would it surprise you if I told you no, he's not? So okay, so that's his friend whom he asked to video because he talks to him. It's very concerted effort over there. Request for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Does Ms. Worthen understand? I can talk to anybody in this room. I want to Mr. Mr. Mays, please make sure that your request for information are proper. Thank you. There is a request what is your for point? Uh, what is your point? My point was, he keeps interrupting me, and you, you did state that, but... In order for this meeting to move forward, you need to give warnings for repeated behaviors. Um, so I'll continue if I'm allowed. Uh, Mr. Mays does not want me to speak on this because it shows I'm bringing to light the relationship he has with this audience member who he wants to keep in here so that he can continue to antagonize the council members that he does not like. Request for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Ms. Worthy, would it surprise you? I don't care what you speak about as long as you're accurate. Well, point Mr. Order, Mays, this is, is your point, Councilwoman Lewis. My point of order is, according to council rules, you cannot use requests for information to just take the floor. You must utilize requests for information to make your decision on the next vote. So therefore, Mr. Mays has abused this over 10 times Please give Mr. Mays a warning. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Please proceed, Ms. Worthy. Point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point, Mr. Mays? Let me read through 26.1. A request for information request information from a member holding the floor, period. And that's what it is. I don't know why you allow Ms. Lewis to make these rules up to about the next vote. Do you see 26.1? And then if you read 26.2, and she keep interrupting you, trying to give you directions and ain't even citing the rule properly. And you won't warn her. And it's getting to be a little much. So 26.2 says, its purpose is to help the member making the request for information understand the process and the potential consequences of the next vote. A request for information that asks a question for which the requester already knows the answer uh, is improper. So it does indeed say it is a pur it, its purpose is to help the member making the request for information understand the next vote. What is your it point, Mr. Mays? more than that. 26.1 says a request for information uh, from the member holding the floor. And then 26.2 says his, pers his purpose is to help the member making the request for information uh, understand the process and the potential consequences of the next vote. It also goes on to say request for information that asks a question for which the requester already knows the answer. Uh, is improper. I don't know the answer to these questions. And I, my next vote is coming up in this 
to appeal. So All right, proceed, Ms. Worthy. My point, my, let me finish my point of order by no, reading the rules that's been breached. That's not a point. Point of I'll order. I'll continue. What is your point, point of Mr. order? Mays. And then finally it says, a request for information cannot be ignored by the providing officer, but the providing, providing officer upon hearing the request may decide whether the request is legitimate and can proceed or whether the speaker is misleading utilizing the motion to secure the floor for other purposes. The presiding officer must rule with either proceed or deny. And so using a request for information to gain the floor is not allowed. So my point is this. There also says multiple did abuses you, of the use see? of requests for information is a cause for disciplinary action. Point of order. I don't mind being disciplined, but the point is you got to do it right. You got to either say deny or proceed, and you're not doing that. And so that means you can be disciplined as well. So you got to get it right. Proceed, Ms. Worthy. Thank you. So once again, we are constantly interrupted. It's a concerted effort. Um, if not a concerted effort, it is, um, it, what is the point, basically? To not allow business to get done? Why? Does it stem from hatred? Point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point, Mr. Mays? She's speaking to my motive, like I don't want to get business done. Mr. And Mays, you she said did not say anyone's it. name. I'm here to get business done. She did not say anyone's name, Mr. Mays. If that, if that were you. the case, then Mr. Mays would not abstain, which means he, he shouldn't even come, because if you're abstaining, you're not voting. So his residents are let down. Um, that's one. Second, um, the constant appeals over, um, and then the constant attacks on colleagues. And then when it's called out, it's, I can say it all I want, and I'll continue to say it. There's no remorse. There is no, and then he has members that back that up. But if, if we were to say something to them. Excuse me, what is your point, Councilwoman Burns? speak to motives as to someone backing them up and the residents not being served and you need to please warn her for speaking to motives she can say that the residents are not being served that's how she feels she did not specifically say she who was a resident serving go ahead i feel like if i'm going to be interrupted if this is a true statement i'm making and people are upset about it point of order point of order what is your point of order, Mrs. Winfrey Carter? Um, is she being germane to to this appeal? You, no, she's not. You um, she's going way off base. Let's stay germane. You know what? This is a dumpster fire right now. Miss Winfrey Carter, public. you are correct in the fact that she is not germane. When her fourth or three seconds were up, I was going to address that. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Proceed. All right, she's done. So as all of my colleagues, as we finish out this appeal, the appeal is about removing the audience member. That is what the appeal is about. Let's focus on what the appeal is about. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the appeal? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Okay, listen. The responsibility of the chair is to chair a meeting that's gonna keep every individual in this room engaged, okay? By the young man, Sion, or whatever he did, that shouldn't have had any, anything, any bearings on what's going on up here. I don't even know why we pay so much attention to the residents, I'm glad you're here. But so much attention to what they're saying. They can have their sidebar conversations. They can sigh, they can laugh. What is this? I'm not, I'm not understanding. <laughs> that man, and yeah, I feel like I feel like he's being picked with. He's being singled out. 
because of something that happened a couple of weeks ago. And it shouldn't be. And then to give him a first warning immediately and not say, young man, can you please calm down? You're just going to give him a first warning and then soon after that, give him a second warning. We better be careful when it comes to the residents that come to our city council meeting. The residents put you in your seats. Not her. Mr. Mays, refrain from yelling out when you do not have the floor. But yes, you haven't been elected yet. And if I were you, I would be a little careful. You've only been nominated. Whoa. You have not been elected. So be careful with the residents when, when it comes to the residents. Yeah. And then. Request for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Is when we got a you right looking down this way, because you could hear them too, couldn't you? Right. Just rule. You Mr. Could. Mays, direct it to me. Just rule. Beg your pardon? Direct it to me. Say what? Direct your comments to the chair. That's, through, that's who they was to, through you to her. You gave me the floor. Request for information is to the speaker. Mm, but you talked, you spoke directly to Ms. Marky Carter. Thank you, Ms. Proceed. It's, but yeah, I understand what he's saying because they should be rude. They should be warned for talking out loud. If, if you're going to warn people, warn the people up here. Councilwoman Worthen should have several warnings already. And Councilwoman Worthy, I don't know why you parked in my parking space. Councilwoman this Winfrey Carter. Fifth ward. Councilwoman Winfrey Carter, please. Next time you park in my parking space, you're going to come downstairs to all flat tires. Madam Chair. Woo. Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes the Councilwoman in the second ward. Thank you. This meeting is getting beyond out of hand. We have people administering threats, stabbing of tires. This is too much. And so, I mean, yeah, I, this is just too much. And I'm not going to sit here and allow colleagues. Councilwoman, Councilwoman, Humphrey Carter, you do not have the floor. Please refrain from yelling out. What is your point of order, Mr. Mays? Is she in a point of order? No, no, she asked for the floor to speak on the appeal, Mr. Mays. She's speaking on the appeal. Yes, She's Mr. speaking Mays. on something irrelevant to the appeal. Ms. Winfrey Carter just made that comment, Mr. Mays. Go ahead, Ms. Lewis. Go ahead, Ms. Lewis. Proceed. Point of order. Proceed. What is your point of order, Mr. Mays? I could say something about Australia, and that don't make it relevant to the appeal. Mr. Mays. So point of order. What is you your point keep of her order? in line being germane on the appeal, just as you did me. Proceed, Ms. Lewis. I move that we give Mr. Mays his first warning. Can I so move? Support. Call. All right. So, Madam Chair. It has been a um, motion to put on the floor to give Mr. Mays his first warning. It has been properly seconded. Madam Chair. I, the Board, board Council person, what is your point of order, Mr. Mays? Madam Chair, I got two. One, you entertain an emotion, but you won't entertain an appeal. Two, when somebody make a motion, your job is to repeat it and ask for a second. You got on me for just hollering out and not having Mr. Mays, you are not chairing this meeting. But you are. I am correct. Well, Ms. Lewis is. Correct. Here. Thank you, Mr. Mays. It has been moved and properly seconded. Madam Chair. Ms. Lewis. Call for the question. The question has been called. It has been properly supported by the ninth ward council person. Roll call, Madam Clerk. No. Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Michette? Yes. Ms. Worthy? Yes. Ms. 
vote is five yes, three no. The vote is five yes, three no. We will now go into a uh, roll call for, as to whether or not to give Mr. Mays his first warning. Ms. Lewis. Yes. Ms. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Priestley. Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter. No. Ms. Burns. No. Ms. Michette. Yes. Ms. Worthing. Yes. Mr. Mays. Yeah, I abstain so I can put the reason on the record that Ms. Michette is letting Lewis direct this meeting wrongfully. Oh, yeah. And y'all are looking ridiculous. That's why, in my mind, laugh, he who laughs, laughs, Ms. Michette, laugh best. You laugh at first. And so, may I continue to speak on this appeal? She has to. We, we're not done. I'm sorry. Uh, the vote is five yes, two no, one abstention. The vote is five yes, two no, one abstention. Mr. Mays will receive his first warning. Point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point of order? Once she makes a motion, she loses the floor. We've never been able to make motions and get the floor back. You let her direct you down a dirt road of death. Thank you. Point taken. Would anyone else like to speak? Yes. Mr. Murphy. Call for the question. All right. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, Point of order. This is an appeal. Now, if you recognize in my point of order. You didn't give me the opportunity. You started speaking. Mr. Mays, what is your point of order? Well, I wish you would check the rest of for speaking without being recognized. My point of order is this is an appeal. And his, he can't supersede the rules with that motion. Call it for the question on an appeal. If an appeal is specific. You ask him to want discussion. Now, if he want to suspend the rules, that's a different thing. But this kangaroo court is getting ridiculous, and he's been here longer than you. And you let them direct you down a path of doom. Know about that. Councilwoman Burns. Which appeal are we in? We are still in the appeal about the audience. For a warning, you've been warned. We are in the appeal about the audience member. Same logic 
apply to prevent, effectively prevent that motion from being called at any time. Um, so I would say, given that there's request no, for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? Attorney Dan, when you look at an appeal, it tells you the steps to go through. When you look at a motion, it doesn't tell you that specifically in the rules. Uh, that's incorrect. The uh, rules state that, uh, where is this? Under the date that basically it state, the rules state that a, that Request for information. What's what your request, rules Mr. specifically are you referring to? Rule 28.3 is what sets forth the normal two rounds of five minutes on any on any item of, um, as the default. Um, request for information. What is your request, Mr. Mays? That's a right to speak in a debate. Look at the rule as it relates to an appeal and the process that's written. Mr. Mays, what rule are you having to look at? I'm looking for it now, I know it's that. I'm asking him to look at it if he will. Yes, I'm looking at that. Okay, what rule is it? Rule 1.2, beginning with the member who made the appeal and concluding with the chair. 1.3. What rule? 1.2. 1.3 speaks to a parliamentarian's authority. And it's specific to how an appeal works. If the appeal is seconded, the chair shall state the decision that is appealed from and then states the question to the appeal be, beginning with the member who made the appeal and concluding with, and concluding with the chair. Each member may speak once regarding an appeal for three minutes. With that is specific to an appeal, unlike when you look at the motion, it ain't specific like that. Uh, with respect, council member, but the way that you are arguing would result in no one being able to be called for the question ever because in an appeal, it doesn't matter whether it be an no, appeal it does or matter. a matter. The point of order. The appeal Mr. is. Mr. Mays? The, the Mr. Appeal. Mays, let me recognize you. You did earlier. Then you just said point of order just now, which means you have to be recognized. Look, you have to do whatever you want to. This is getting to be a little much. But my point of order is recognized as that's specific. Mr. Mays, do you want me to recognize you or you want us to do what I you want, want to you do? Just to be regular. Um, point of order. What is your point of we order? We are now moving on. on. I will uh, call the question. She wasn't recognized. Get on her ass. Dang. Literally just recognized her. Please refrain from the vote. Point of order. What is your point of order? Mr. Why Mays? you discriminate against black folks and don't discriminate against? You didn't recognize Ms. Word and then she hollered out. And you didn't check her like you're checking me in this public arena. And she said right next to you, my point of order is you don't discriminate against your own race. Your point of order is denied because there are cameras that you can go back and watch later. I've recognized her every time you said I have not. Your point of order is denied. And point of order. What is your point of order, Ms. Lewis? My, my point of order is this is Mr. Mays, my 20th abuse of a point of order. Mr. Mays needs a second warning and needs to be removed from this meeting. His tone is out of order, yelling at the chair, inciting racial division, on top of abusing privileged motions. Mr. Mays needs a second warning so we can go forward with the business of the city. So, the call for the, yes, Ms. Burns, what is your point of order? We, we, we are done. He did say that it, you can do it, and so I'm going to move forward with the calling of the question. Okay, but well I want to, I do have my point of order. I'd like to just make some matters here. Mm -hmm. uh, it does state very clearly, it says the chair can't state the reasons for the decision. It says when there's an appeal, beginning with the member who made the appeal, which means. I'm sorry, Ms. Burns. Who, who are you reading? I mean, 1.2. Thank you. Yes. And it states beginning with the member who made the appeal. So if, if you have to have a starting point, so if I make an appeal, then I, and then the chair, um, which would be you, would say, okay, there's a appeal, 
And so then you would go to the person who made the appeal. So if we allow for a person to do call to question or to gain the floor, because it's very specific to its states that each member may speak once regarding, but only for three minutes and there's one round. So how do you take, if you're in an appeal, how do you take the due process from the person or from the, um, from the body, from us, if someone uses a, in a, um, a call for questions? It states that we get time to, each member gets that time, because it's not like our regular, we get to five minutes. So it's not the same thing, it's clearly not the same thing. You know, this one tells you, you first go to the member. Our normal debate, it's a different process. It's a different amount of time, and it's a different process. So I, I don't, I don't see what you're seeing, Attorney Kim, um, because appeal allows you to have due process. It's just like in court, and when it's amongst the members, if you're saying a person for cause a question takes away your process or due process to argue or debate your uh, issue with with your members. And so with you stating that, I feel it takes away the process to debate it. It completely takes it away, because the call for question is used for that. Attorney Kim. Thank you. Was, with respect, is there a question that you'd like me to answer? Well, my, my question is, do you see these as the same? Are you still standing on that with an appeal as opposed to regular debate? Because those are two different things. An appeal allows you to voice what your issues are to debate it with your colleagues in a shorter amount of time. And it states specifically that each member gets three minutes. And you have to begin with the first person. What is your point of order, Mr. Mays? Two of us believe that. And he don't make the decision. If you decide you believe what he believe, we have a right to appeal your decision. So, um, Ms. Burns, he done already said what he said. We wait and see what she do and say so we can appear. Point of order. What is your point of order? We are still in um, our vote for call the question. Madam Chair. Four four councilwoman. Um a, a, appeal is a debate. We are debating the appeal. So a call for the question ends debate. Period. End of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so now we will move forward with calling with our vote on call for the question. I appeal we'll the decision of the chair. You cannot appeal inside of an appeal. I appeal that this any, any decision of the chair is subject to appeal. We will take care of it after Mr. Mays. Roll call, Madam Clerk. It'll be a muted issue. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yeah. Point of order. What is your point of order? I'm not leaving the first board. Just called us stupid. Just wanted to state that for the record. Roll call, call Madam Clerk. Okay. Mr. Murphy. Say what? Yes. You say something? We are in the middle point of the roll call. Order. We are in the middle of the roll of call. Order. There is no point of order. Point of order. We are in the middle of the roll call. Oh, okay. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Murphy Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Michelle? Yes. Ms. Worthing? No. Ms. Lewis. Yes. The vote is five yes, three no. The vote is five yes, three no. We will now call for the Form question. Yes. Can you, can you repeat mm -hmm. for us what we are voting on now? We are voting on the audience member giving a warning. So the appeal. The appeal is for the appeal was against the chair warning the audience. Point of order, Madam Chair. Point of order. Mr. Mays. Now you gave him the vote, correct? The, the procedure we in, you don't get the vote. He could have said point of order and asked you. But if you're going to be a stickler, be a stickler all the way around. Warn these 
folks just like you're doing me. If you're going to be in this Madam Chair, we ain't in no procedure. You gave him the blow. He didn't say point of order, repeat this or that. If y'all are going to play the game, play it right. What is your point? Mr. Mason's taking the floor. We are now on a vote. Point of order. Well, well, you, point of order. You have to rule on my point of order. I don't care if she interrupted. You say you can't do an appeal on an appeal. You can't do a point of order on a point of order. I got the right to have you rule on my appeal. Yeah. On my point of order. Before you entertain her. Can on I top of on, Madam Clerk? It's getting to be a little much. Ms. Priestley. No. Mr. Murphy Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Mr. Burns? No. Mr. Lewis? No. Mr. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Mr. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Mr. Lewis? No. Mr. Lewis? No. The vote is three yes, five no. Pulling of the chair stands. Uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays? You say you got some outstanding appeals. You turn it to Attorney Kim, and I, one of them is very important. And I'm appealing the ruling under 1.2 that your decisions can be appealed. It says all decisions can be appealed. And so I appeal your decision because you're the worst I've ever seen. You're a chairperson who won't entertain an appeal on your decision. That's the worst of the worst. So I appeal that. There is an appeal. What, what exactly are you appealing, Mr. Rule 1.2, I stated. How about that? You want me to read it? And this one, Rule 1 1.2 is being appealed in response to what, it Mr. Says, Mays? The president of the chair shall decide all questions arising under these rules. But it's being appealed in response to what? You. What? You said that your, appeal, your decisions can't be appealed. I'm saying all of them can be appealed. I actually need that appeal. to use those words, so that's an improper appeal. Point of order. When I appeal it, ways? your job is to ask is there a second. You, but you were making an appeal on something that never happened. Thank you, Bob. You're making an appeal on something that never happened. Yeah, I did make an appeal immediately when you wouldn't entertain them appeals. You wouldn't yeah. entertain the one where you threw him out, given a second warning. You wouldn't entertain the one um, when I appealed, and you said you can't appeal during an appeal. The record will show that. Point so I'm appealing your, point your is decision Lewis? not to well, 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 entertain your point? Mr. Mays, there's a point of order. Ms. Lewis, Lewis called a point of order. Ms. Lewis has the floor. What is your point of order, Ms. Lewis? My point of order. Point of order. Is according to point of order. Point of order, Mr. Mays. Yeah, this can go back and forth. It actually cannot because you just illegally took the floor. Yeah, right? Using no, a privilege you just motion. said what's my point of order. Go I ahead. Make one. She called one, you entertained her. Now I'm calling one on top of her and you entertained me. Mm -hmm. I was in a point of order. You got the rule on it. I appeal your decision. You do not have a decision to appeal because the words you use never came out of my mouth. Say so what? What is your point of order, Ms. Lewis? I appeal your decision that I can't appeal. You the just said I could not appeal that decision. All right. Yes. That is fine. Um, it has been appealed. This will be your second morning. Is there a second? All right, it has been moved and properly seconded. Point of order. Um, what is your point? Okay, thank you. So just wanted to get back to here because right now the appeal is improper because just as you stated, you never said that your decisions couldn't be appealed. You just stated according to Robert's rule, rule number 24, which deals with appeals, it specifically speaks that you cannot stack appeals within an appeal. Point of order, Madam Chair. She's, point. She's, she's using a point of order to take the floor. We're in the middle of an appeal. The appeal is improper point because order. of, because what he's saying is not correct. And point of order, Madam Chair. What is your point of order? 
Can you warn her? Mr. Mays and Miss Lewis, as I've just previously stated, the appeal is improper. I never said those words. There's nothing to appeal. If Mr. Mays would like to proceed, this is his second warning.
for it. Do the Chris Rock. See who can deal with that. I mean, Will Smith. I use your knuckles on that phone. There are six members present. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Lewis. Oh, I move that we table on all the fields and other business so we can move forward with the business of the city. Support. It has been moved and properly supported. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, call for questions. All right. You have the floor, six board council person. What is your point of order? So the um, so the vote calls the question. Call the question. Okay, so it should be if we're voting. Okay, uh, 
No, no, we already did that. Now we're on to voting the resolution on to council. No, am I understanding you correctly? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Forte. Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Lindsay Carter? No. Ms. Berman? No. Ms. Bouchard? Yes. The vote is five yes, two no. Resolution 230320 has been moved to council. Madam Chair. Uh, one second. We will now move on to resolution 230434, ARPA funds gap financing residential and mixed use projects. Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the council person in the fourth ward. Make a motion to move 230434 to council. There's been a motion to move 230434 to council. Is there a second? Support. It has been moved and properly supported. Discussion. Um, Madam Chair. The councilwoman in the sixth ward has a vote. Um, thank you. Is that Shelly the spot screen? Could you come and explain that, please? It is 230434, ARPA funds gap financing mm -hmm. residential and mixed use projects. Okay. So that one, um, all of the, there's a chart inside of it, if you guys have the site package that I have, there's a chart like this inside. All of these were uh, council, I mean, approved by the committee, but they were over budget, like two mil, theirs was 2150000 so we had to cut it down. So if you look at the first column of the chart, that's the organization name. The second row of the column is funded project purpose. The third column is the request, the original request that they made for the committee. And then the fourth column would be the mayor recommendations. And the other two columns would be just getting contact number. And I apologize, my computer has got its own mind. So I was not able to, uh, and I had to take it down today to I got it. No, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm, so I have not had a chance to, and okay. I'm still having troubles with my computer. Right. Um, and so there's, you say it was over budget? Yeah, there's an over budget. If you look at the column where the original request from the committee, there's this 2 million, 150,000, but the amount that was approved was 1 million 400,000 from the council. Okay, oh, so this is a, this is everything bundled in. Yes. Okay, so this is another bunch. So we have main institute, community service. No, it should be separated. You separated them all. Oh, okay. So they're all separated. Right. Was this the one that asked for, did he have an extra 75000 Is that, is that the one? I don't think so. Okay. But well, we separated them all for you so you could vote on them individually. But on the chart, they was all on the chart. Okay. Okay. And, and so this, We'll go to the Latinx Technology and Community mm -hmm. Center. Yep. Okay. And does it? I'm sorry. That's okay. If you look at the I'm chart, still I'm up. My, my five minutes. <laughs> if you look at the chart, it give you a full picture. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and I'm looking at the, the chart. And I okay. see how they are broken down. Right. Um, with the different, you know, organizations, mm -hmm. with what they have, and so these. All of these are on here from that the committee. This is mm -hmm. separate and we asked the law for. Yeah, they all, the they are, the resolutions are all separated. We just have a chart for you to okay. see it all together as a big picture. Okay, okay. And so the Latin X with their proposed project. I, I couldn't get in my computer. Okay. And so their project. Is this another clean project? No. You know what this one is? Who's Latinx? Yeah. Who's Latinx? Yeah. It's 
Is it, you know, I don't love no, it. No, I'm not that you should have deferred with this. That, yeah. if you go about the, do you have a chair to Council Murphy? I'm trying to find out. If you go about this project, because I know Latin X is supposed to be like yes. war. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, do you know what they're doing in this? Do you have yes. a chair to? Have you spoken with Latin X? Yes. I'll speak for them. I'll talk to them. Yeah, I have had really bad computer problems in the past month. So now it looks like I can't get to my email on my phone. So they um, they're with this grant right here, they're gonna build the early childhood center, which is really needed over in that community. Okay, so they're building it. That's it. So what yeah, that's what they're doing with the money. Yeah. They're and that's why I call it. So they're building an early childhood yeah. center in that ward. Yeah. Um and so this will assist with them. Is it a that's a for profit? No. <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, I could have done Look, I, I got to find my actual thing to get the, the description because I need so it. So we're, so we're giving the money to help build a child care center. Yes. Okay. And so it's a non-profit? Yeah. I believe it is, and it's a well needed because over in that area. Oh, it's child care is not. Yeah. Is yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, child care make you think about not having a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, my best friend just pays, pays $900 a month for a grandchild. It's, wow. So, okay. I will try to find it. And I, I apologize. That's okay. Because my time is up. I know Councilman Murphy's getting ready to get into some things. Okay, thank you. All right. I have bundled up all my stuff. So. <laughs> well, I'm going to call you back. Okay. Yeah, everybody else for our second round. Okay. <laughs> just, just take the first seat for now. Just take the first seat. Um, would anyone else like to speak to this resolution? Yes. The chair recognizes the councilman in the third ward. Thank you. Um, this project is um, one of many projects with the Latinx um, community over there. It, they got the Latinx computer center. Then they got the playground they just built last year. Then next to the playground, they bought a building next to that building that they got some funding from uh, Congressman Dan Kildee and I think the Mock Foundation. So they leveraging dollars to do the renovation of this building. This building will be an early education, leasable office space um, supporting the Latinx business. They got, I think, two floors on there. Um, they going a renovation on it and they will be open for the community. What the Latinx is trying to do is uh, clean up that corridor along Lewis Street on the east side, which is a vital need for the east side. I'm excited about the work that they're doing over there. I did get to meet with um, the young man that's the director of, I forgot his name. Um, Asa, Asa. Asa, yeah. So we have um, talked on several occasions about this project. So this is not, they, the funding that we're giving them is only supporting other funding that they have towards the renovation of that particular um, building. So I support this, and it's kind of on the borderline. It was used to be on the borderline of the third, fourth, and fifth ward. Now it's in the third ward. But they service the whole community. They don't just service um, the third ward. The building is located there. So a lot of people that they service come from around that particular area or just those who like patronizing the Latinx community. So this is just going to expand some of their programming in that particular area. I support it. Thank you. Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes second ward councilwoman. Um, I also support it as well because um, it's on the east side. The east side needs help, and this is a way to help the east side get help. I see that the I see that the um, administration they proposed one hundred twenty-five thousand. That's twenty-five thousand dollars less than what um, they applied for. Um, Councilwoman Burns, she did make a, a point in terms of the utilization of the space, you know, being for profit. So that is a small concern of mine, but um, outside of that, this area needs it, and this organization does a lot of great things in that community. So um, I would like to, 
I would like to go with the administration's proposed amount of $125,000 because I think that'll be a I think that that'll be a good move going forward since they are going to make profit off this in the future. And point of, point of information. Yes. Um, what is your point? Who you move to the speaker? It's an early education, not a daycare. So I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Yeah. So, so through you, uh, Madam Chair, to Mr. Murphy. So when you say early education, are you referring to like Head Start and stuff? Okay, okay not a daycare. Thank you for clearing that up. All right, so let's go ahead and um and go with the one hundred and fifty thousand. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, Councilwoman Lewis, are you, are you making an amendment or are you just talking through your thoughts right now? So I am, um, so let me be clear. So on this resolution, does it say 175? Okay, because the advisory committee recommended 175, but they only applied for 150. So I want to give them what they applied for. So we can have the twenty-five thousand dollars going towards other essential things. They act for, they act for one hundred and fifty thousand. That's how much they ask for. So I want them all they ask for. So I would like to put an amended motion on the floor to give them one hundred and fifty thousand. And I'm so moving. All right, there is an amendment on the floor to change the um, amount from 175 to 150. Uh, I believe I heard the council in the fourth ward. Yes, I support that. And it has been properly seconded. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Lewis. Thank you. So, um, so, and again, not a knock on the program. I highly support it. As members of the ARPA committee and seeing how many resolutions that we have before us, we want to make sure that we want to meet people where they are, you know, giving them what they ask for, and not go over and beyond. But that's just so we can do other great things with the money, such as, like we said before, Calumet County, they were able to erase $89 million of medical debt for $466,000. Those are the things that we would like to do. We also would like to, um, to salvage these homes that are coming up in the near future these homes and lots and come up with a contingency plan so we don't have to give everything to the land bank and so we can increase our general funds through the sale of these homes and these vacant lots that we have here so we can create more homeowners. We hear negative stories of people, people losing their home. We're trying to create positive stories of people gaining their home. And the only way we can do that is to be some sticklers to these funds. So um, as stated again, the advisory committee, the community committee, they recommended um, 100, excuse me, 175,000. Hispanic Technology Center, they asked for 150, and administration said that they recommend 175. I would like to go with what Latinx recommended for themselves and give them $150,000 so we can do some things that are better than amazing with this money, with this limited lifetime money that we're receiving in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who likes this? Okay, the chair recognizes the third ward. Thank you. So even though the committee recommended 150,000, that don't mean we can't go over and beyond the 150,000. When they apply, even though they apply, you have categories in which they can apply up to. So if they can only apply up to 25,000 or up to 50,000, if they want to apply for 75,000, and the request for proposals only had 50,000. They only can apply for 150,000 and not for 175,000. So that's the difference between what we may be looking at. Point of information. What is your point of information? Mr. Murphy, have you looked at the chart that was included with this resolution? Because there's um, dollars amount up to 250,000 dollars in this category that was um, that was requested. Uh, well, again. Like I said, um, the committee recommended 150,000 and the mayor and administration 
is recommending $175,000. I don't have a problem with that. And I, 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 I just, me personally, don't want to be locked in on what the committee, because I wasn't in love with the committee. And I'm going to just keep on saying it, and I know we may not agree with that. I wasn't in love with the committee. So when you come and say the committee. Request for information. What, what is your request, Councilman Lewis? So does Councilman Murphy understand that the committee said to give them $175,000? Administration also recommended 175,000. <laughs> like I said before, if they, the mayor and administration is recommending 175,000, I don't have no problem with that. You got some a, a community center that's doing great things on the east side, 150 or 175 thousand dollars ain't really a lot of money compared to how jacked up it is on the east side. And if y'all know how jacked up it is, just go ride around there. I ride around there every morning to go check on Washington School to see how bad it is. And it's really bad on that side. So if I could be a pillar or the, the, the lead as a councilman, in the third ward that can help push some money over there. I want to push millions of dollars over there on the east side because that's how bad it is. It looked like a tornado hit it. So if somebody over there doing great things, I don't mind giving them $175,000. And if I could go over there and touch and feel things, that's one thing to be able to go and touch and feel things that people are doing versus what people say they want to do. It's one thing to say you go do something. It's another thing for me to go and drive on down Lewis Street and see what the Latinx community. So, you know, no, I'm not voting for just 150,000. I'll vote for the 175. And if it fails because we don't got the uh, vote, then I'm just pissed off. Yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere. But I hear what you're saying too. They applied for 150,000. And you want to do that. Um, the resolution said 175,000. So I'm not going to the wrong. Thanks. All right, thank you, Zamir. So anybody else that would like to speak on this chair motion? Um, Councilwoman Ford. Yes, e even though um, they are in the third ward, they consider themselves to be fourth ward as well. Um, the fourth ward of the, in that part of the area only ends at, ends at Franklin and they're on Lewis. So it's not too far out of fourth ward. I'll give it to Quincy, but I'll take their word. Okay. <laughs> um, but there was a comment made that they are a for-profit. They are not. They are a 501c3. I am looking at their 990 right now. So um, I just wanted just to clarify that they are. Um, that also, they ha do have other applications that they submitted, and I applaud them for, for doing a due diligence and looking for every dime that they could qualify for. Every time, I think they have five applications in. I might be wrong, but I know that there's several. And that we've already approved some. Um, so I think I would love to give extra money to visit to the center. I actually would. But at the first go around, I want to just give what the people applied for. My feeling, that's that's what they asked for. And I, I've been consistent with that since we got elected, that if that's what they asked for, that's what we gave them. And we can look at additional monies down the road with whatever's left of the money. And so I'm going to um, vote to give them the 150000 And they also have, a, I believe there's a resolution on the council, um, the council agenda that I created um, and wrote up for them for, I don't even know what it is. It's, I, it's alternative vacant use lots. So, um, and I gave them what they wanted. Franklin Mission has $22,000 for, um, for food access. I would love to give them 50,000, but I put 22,000 because that's what they applied for. So that's what I'm gonna stick to. So I'm gonna give what they applied for and asked for as first go round, maybe we can increase it later, but they are also a 501c3. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this motion? Yes. Um, the chair recognizes Councilwoman in fifth ward. Um, Madam Chair, through you to uh, Ms. Hart, Mrs. Green. Ms. Hart. 
So she sees that in her, we do know that every uh, step developmentally, developmentally is important for each child. And to have a safe space nowadays um, for kids to nurture and to grow. And it is an early childhood center. Um, I know child care is ridiculous. It is, it is, you know, it is a, a great investment for your child, but it is expensive. Um, and to have, I think, affordable child care in a community that is devastated. I mean, that community over there is, I mean, there's, there's, and we've got other communities too, it's not just that one. And I, I want to be fair with that because I think each, each place when our school model was before, you have a school and a park in every neighborhood that you could walk to. And kids walked to school, you know, for lunch. Right. They went home for lunch and then came back. They don't do that now. You know, and, and you get kids who show up for school just for the breakfast program and then the lunch program. And we know that it is generally in our um, more challenged um, neighborhoods. I am for the 175, that's why the money is available. Like we're investing in their future and investing in a, a great project. And if you look at, um, as I'm not sure, I see so many um, non-speaking um, people, uh, residents, that, you know, even when the wife, she's home and she's with the children, you know, I've had them, she's called her, her husband who speaks very broken English and you see the, you know, little children, you know, that are there and no one, you know, it's a, not even an English speaking household. And people can think, you know, that when, when you're in a poor neighborhood, it really, color doesn't matter. I mean, you, you got knock on those doors, you see every color that there is. You know, the common thing is they have to live in affordable housing where they can afford to live. And education is not, we are behind um, when it comes to supporting um, young children, new families, and as we look at uh, people, uh, immigrants coming here, they, they're here. You know, in that area, I, I, I want to be supporting the 175 because I want to make sure if we get into the early childhood center, let's get the money while we have, this is doing some good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's doing some good, and there's always overages, and you cannot calculate how much something is going to cost you, in every project, and that's where change orders come in. We get change orders to death, to death up here because you don't know about how these projects are going to go. So I will be um, supporting with the 175 for the Early Childhood Center. And I know we have a second round for my colleagues. Sometimes I agree you give them what they want, but we have the opportunity to give them more and it's going to be beneficial. Let's give them more to be beneficial. And this is a good demographic that we need to be supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the amended um, resolution to which there is only one round? Is anyone else that would like to speak? All right. With that said, Madam Clerk, we are voting on to amend the resolution from 175 to 150. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Vote is five yes, two no. The vote is five yes, two no. That resolution, excuse me, the resolution has been that amendment. Go ahead. I make a motion to amend 230434 to 230434 point one with the hundred and fifty thousand dollar amount. All right, there's a um, motion on the floor to amend to 230434 point one. Is there a second? Just support. All right, it's been moved and properly supported. I'm sorry, you just voted on. Oh, we did no. just vote. Okay. We just did. We did just right. make it 230434.1. So, so, so it's moving down. Chair, I make a motion to send 230434.1 to council. 
Uh, right there is a motion on the floor to send 2304.1 to council. Is there a second? Support. Yes, we move and properly support it. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilwoman in the sixth ward. Is there anyone from the project here? Is there anyone from the project in the audience? I don't believe so. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this? Yes. The chair recognizes the third board council. Yes, I, I, I support the 150, even though I support the 175,000, but I don't want to kill them um, not being able to get the 150,000, because the 150,000 is better than um, just not getting anything. It's just $25,000 short for what they asked for. And I understand what you guys are saying. When it comes down to it, they only ask for 150000 My question is, um, would, would, do we need the 25000 that we're taking away in gap funding, or can that money be used for other categories that we might need to fill in the gap for? Are you? This question would um, be to um, we, uh, if you don't mind, we'll find it. Um, Councilwoman Chris Lee. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I don't think any of us can answer the question because we don't have the power to dictate what the money is. Yes, we do. Okay, but well, if we got the power to do, do that, then I don't need to ask somebody. I can just figure out where I want to put it in. Thank you. All right, no, thank I'm, you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Would anyone else like to? Would anyone else like to speak to resolution two three zero four three four point one? Would anybody else like to speak? Seeing as how no one else would like to speak to this resolution, roll call, Madam Clerk. So it's resolution 230435 and let me see, not saying which. Is the 700 and 800 bill? Could you just speak to both of them? Go ahead. Okay, hold on. Hold on, I'm almost a second. 
it was packed. Oh. <laughs> okay, be sure. I've been writing so many of them. I see that, but we got a lot today, just so yeah. people, people understand. We have literally got a lot, so it is impossible we <laughs> stay to have all this read. Yeah. If I remember correctly, and I can't find my, I don't, I don't have my print out in front of me, but one of them is like a Sylvan house or something like that, where they're going to do for seniors. The Sylvan house. I think, is that one of them? No. You see, now the administration is a little confused. I have to write the paper here. We're going to work through this together. I had all the explanations in there, but then I, I, I don't know. I can't. I jumbled all the stuff up. So that's still what we're talking about. All right. Oh, okay. The McFarland 700 Court Street property is to attract and retain older adults in the community by increasing the number of affordable housing units and creating a continuum of senior uh, care. Uh, older adults can age to a place um, in the heart of Flint and remain independent for as long as possible. In addition, aging in places costs significantly less than the alternative of moving to a nursing house. Uh, currently, the oldest community, that, I'm sorry, the closest community that offers all levels of care uh, on one campus for older adults is seven, I think it says seven miles, 70 miles away from here. So they're going to be a place that offers full care to senior, to senior adults without moving them to foster care or homes. So they're like independent living. You know how they have the independent living service. Yeah, they, they opened up a real expensive one on um, yeah. <laughs> Center Road that cost you $4,750 a month. Yeah, they said the closest one to them is yeah. 70 miles away. Oh, they just opened up this one, and it's expensive. So basically, so if you go from um, for living independently to, is it basically like continued by like 24-hour care? So this is helping to fill that gap. Yes, and so that they can, so the, senior, the citizens that's already probably there, they're going to add additional units that they won't have to move out of their houses or go to a, you know, another senior living facility where they can be independent. They can be independent right there in their own community. Yeah, and then that, and I get what you're saying. Now, like I said, if we didn't have, we, were, we got some of the we didn't kill it. We I killed the forest. I know. But that's okay. But so, and it, that that housing is important yes. because when you, and it's expensive, a lot of people can't afford it. Mm -hmm. You could be living in a facility and then your uh, health declines mm -hmm. and you have, they will move you to a separate facility. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult because seniors become, you have dementia or Alzheimer's, they become more comfortable, they need familiarity, people that they're familiar with. Yeah. And that that is something that's really important. I, I now that I, I truly support. Like I said, I know the cost of uh, Center Road is because my stepmom, who just passed away, we had to, she had dementia, she went immediately, she got sick. And she didn't want to leave, but it was literally 4750 a month. And she could afford it. That's a lot of money, and everyone can. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this resolution? Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the council person in the second ward. All right. Thank you. So yeah, I'm just um, surfing because I know that McFarland has two resolutions in this category. Both of them are being recommended for $125,000. So um, the one that we're on now, just for clarity for this uh, department, mm -hmm. which one? Um, this what is the 700 East Court Street. Park the 700 East Court Street. 700. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so this right here is for. I just want to be exact. Okay. So this is for what? Senior what care. Yeah, for, for extended senior care, so that they can stay in their homes independently. Um, but it serves it serves a, all the way from downtown to Court Street, so it serves a bunch of different areas for this um, for the senior care. So, so did, did I hear you right when you said it extends senior care? Yes, so the independent senior care. So they already in their homes, and it's gonna it's, it's gonna buy uh, purchase more units or be able to open more units so that more seniors can come and, and live there. there. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. I've know I've gotten some calls. Mm -hmm from seniors that can no longer take care of their home and that are looking for this kind of care. So it only makes sense. Uh, looking at the dollar amount, I know that they 
have, I want to fund both of them. However, um, seeing that the administration, they recommended $125,000 instead of the $150,000 that they requested. I am, um, since they are going to get two, I, I think it would be uh, fair if we went with the um, with the recommendation of the administration. Because I, I want my colleagues to also look in the line where it says the uh, original request from um, organizations to our committee. Okay, so yeah, they have basically requested over $2 million. We're talking about in terms of everyone who's looking at gap financing. And for this specific category, again, we don't have that much money set aside for it. So do you know, Ms. Sparks, things that I'm looking for, and say, hold on, not through you, but through you, um, Madam Chair, to Ms. Priestley. What is, do you have the maximum amount set aside for gap finance? It's, 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 it's the one year for, for, the, for the total allocation? Yeah, yeah. It, the total, was, I just went ahead and opened another window. The total for this was 3.4 million. We gave 2 million to Clark Commons already, leaving 1.4 million. Okay, Clark Commons is in which ward? Uh, fifth. Fifth, okay, all right, makes sense. But well, we definitely wanna, wanna share the wealth here. And um, well, yeah, so I'm totally for, since they applied for two of them, I think it'll be fair. To, uh, to give them what the mayor said, fund that 125,000. That way it'll still be a big win. And we trust that this money may be matched by one of our philanthropic organizations, but we'll get them almost to the finish line. They just have to go ahead and cross over. So I'm fully um, in agreement for approving both of their resolutions when the other ones come up and funding that 125,000 because they have two applications. Want to be, make sure that we have enough for as many as possible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Green. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this resolution? Seeing less. All right. Seeing how there is no one else, I am going to take some time here. I did have an opportunity to tour this facility, uh, actually, both facilities, along with um, another McFarland home. And one of the things that I want to highlight. Um, to my colleagues for sure is uh, this is a um, continuum of care campus. And so what this means is it's going to increase affordable senior housing as my colleague in the sixth ward discussed the fact that there are other senior, there's other senior housing around here, but it's not affordable. So this is going to increase affordable senior housing. It's going to improve older adults having access to healthcare. It's going to increase access to technology and the internet, going to um, give some of the older residents an opportunity to stay somewhere where they are familiar. Um, it's going to um, it, it's going to do a lot um, in the lives of some of our oldest residents who now just want to be comfortable as they live out the rest of their lives and who may not necessarily have the income to live in certain other places, but it's going to give them the opportunity to feel as though they um, are living in some of those other places. I, I actually welcome my colleagues to take a tour of the 700, 800 building as they are doing this work. Um, I, I'm just excited for uh, the upgrades to the buildings that's happening, what that means for those who are living in that building. And again, the closest low income Closest low income senior care facility is 70 miles away in Detroit. And so we're making sure that we're not displacing low income seniors in the city of Flint. And so I'm in support of both of these projects. And even if they weren't in the seventh ward, I would still be in support of um, both of the projects. So thank you. Um, and I think that is it for the first round of discussion. Uh, is there anyone else in the second round? Um. Oh, not a problem. So um, I just want to comment too. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you didn't. You didn't. Madam Chair. There you go. The chair recognizes the council in the second board. Thank you. So I definitely 
support it. I definitely took a tour. I know people that live there, so I visit people there. And that's one of the things that I definitely take pride in. I take pride in being on the ground, moving with the people. And so I went to the apartments there. I, I seen the campus. They have a campus. And um, they also had an event where they invited, uh, this was before your tenure, Madam Chair, but where they invited council members to come out and have lunch you know, with the, with the decision makers and just to come and see how they do things. And I went. And before the director transitioned to another position, uh, yes, I, I extended my support because they do a lot of great things for the senior citizens here. So again, I just wanted to stress to my colleagues at on your leisure, please go check them out. See the great thing that they're doing at an affordable rate for our seniors uh, within this city. It's right here, downtown, 7th Ward. Um, yeah, so uh, go. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this resolution? Anyone else? All right, seeing as how there is no one else that would like to speak on this resolution, we are now going to vote to send resolution 230435 to council. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Brieson. Yes. Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Ms. Warwick? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Brown? 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 Yes. Mr. Brown?
people that stayed at the Y. I understand the importance of the Y, but them turning them into residential units, I definitely see this. I mean, we won't be voted to give them a tax break, so we might as well um, follow through with the rest of what, we, what we're trying to do to increase housing, get people off the street, get people a permanent home, and also um, beautify our city. And this is specifically in YMCA, either the seventh or the fifth ward. It's the fifth ward. It's the fifth. The fifth ward is winning for this our money. Mm -hmm. So all right. So um, I'm a support. Thank you. That's what that's what it necessarily means. Speaking of the mic, fifth ward. We the people need to hear what you say. Finished. You are? Finished, yes. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this resolution in the second round? So, seeing as how. Madam Chair, uh -huh. is this the project? Um, um, yes. <laughs> is this the project that the uh, basketball player gave a million to? Now, that I would need clarification on. Is there anyone that can? Uh, Give us a point of clarification on that. Yeah. Oh, this screen. Point of information. What Drew you point? to the screen. Why do you can sit back down back there and you know we're going to call you up the word time? I'm never exercising. Get to the practice. Okay. So right. um, yes. This is um, part of the, this is funding the Kyle Kuzma from the basketball team. Uh, yeah, gave them a million dollars when he yeah. first gave it to them is to get started because they're building a new facility across the street from where the old one is. Right, so and that's also yeah. building housing. Yeah, the yep. housing too. Yep, and they have a 1.6 million gap. And how much did he donate? Uh, I think a million. I believe he gave them two all together. Yeah, right? I, think, yeah I think he gave a considerable amount. Yeah. Um, and so when they wrote this application, I think they were they were in a gap of a hundred. I mean, 1.6 million. So they may have to this day got the other million, but they're still looking for the six hundred thousand. So this is help for that. Okay, so that's what this is going for. And their those buildings are is this the ones that are already finished? There's a lot of they're constructing the new one like change across the street from them. So that old one that they're in now, right? They're gonna be constructed. Remember the parking lot was across the street. I think that's where the new one's gonna be constructed. Yeah, because a lot of that is just housing now. That's going up over there. Yeah. As we see the landscape of downtown be demolished and changed. Mm -hmm. um, and so they asked for originally mm -hmm. 500000 according to this spreadsheet. And then for this, this, category, this spreadsheet, mm -hmm. this, we are spreadsheet. <laughs> we over here. I don't know where the 500000 came out of this category. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then they they um, they ask for um, two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and then we're and it was recommended by the mayor's recommendation mm -hmm. to fully fund them mm -hmm. for this project. Um, do we know how many units that this is going to? Yes, um, I think a thousand six hundred is what they said. Hold on, there'll be two story. Oh wait, I'm going to run That's good. 50 units? 50 units. Is it 50? I'm looking at the wrong one, I'm sorry. I had it too. I thought it too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be a five story structure with 50 units of residential rental housing complex. And um, yeah, so that's what it's going to be. And we don't have anyone here tonight um, to speak on behalf of the Y uh, for this 200000 we're giving them, right? No, but they do cover, I mean, I did do a lot of research on it, and they do cover most boards, because, you know, they serve every kid serve who comes from anywhere. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, county. Yeah. 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 So they serve a lot. Um, the redevelopment project was going to be on the corner of East 3rd Street and Harrison Street. And it'll be a mixed-use building with affordable housing and it's what, what, oh, I'm sorry. Can what you address did you say? It's going to be at um, the corner of East 3rd. 
Street and Harrison Street. But that's Ninth Ward then. Is that, that's right down here somewhere? Where they are, yeah, right? Because they changed the boundary. Okay. So, yeah. So I got to get used to the boundaries now. Yeah, so it is, yeah, it, it's in Ninth Ward. Project. So, um, the Ninth Ward is winning. That's a great project. Everybody's winning. <laughs> Flint is winning. Down, Flint downtown, is downtown is, is, yeah. is winning. So, um, so get you, man. Be so now you remember the vibe also have satellite locations in different places. So right, like Pearson Road. Yeah, and so they reach out. You know, they try to reach out to <coughs> lower income been around community forever. Yeah, the YW and the YMCA. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Is there a second? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, 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 Ms. Woodby Carter, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I would say that all of the wards are winning. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not just the fifth ward, it's not just the seventh ward, it's Flint. not just yeah. the ninth ward. We're all winning. It's not just that. It's not just downtown. And when you talk about um, housing, everybody needs to realize we're in a housing crisis. Yeah. And so we need more housing development. Yeah. And yeah, I understand everybody can't afford to purchase a home, so they may have to live in an apartment building. Oh, no. an apartment. So we need more affordable housing. So with that, and, and I see what the Y is trying to do. I mean, the Y helps everybody. The YMCA helps everybody. I had a membership at the YMCA. I need to go back. <laughs> and it was a free membership. It was free. So, so you know, um, let me ask a question, Ms. Um, Harris. Okay. Do we have on record you said that the gap financing is basically used to match what um, what not organizations really, have. Not, not like an equal match, but just to try to fill the gap. Yeah, to so fill that gap of, of need. Do we have do we have the finances of what it is that they need? Yep. Well, uh, according to the structuring of um, the research that I've done. They have most of their money. They were needing 1.6 million, and we have all of that documentation. Yep. Okay, that's that's and what I want to get clear of. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I support this, um, and I just don't support it because it's people thought it was in the fifth ward. <laughs> you know, I support it because we need housing. <laughs> yeah. We need housing. Point blank. I'm for everything housing. Point blank. So, um, and, and as well as uh, McFarland, we do need to um, help to enhance those senior citizen buildings over there. So, um, I'll be voting the, uh, yes to move this to council. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. The chair recognizes councilman in the third ward. Yes, um, just as I'm reading, um, the funding, mm -hmm. they have secured $39 million. They had a $1.6 million in gap funding that they needed to um, complete. Some of the money, the funding that they got, they got um, six, $16,500,000 from the T.S. Mott Foundation. The YMCA of Greater Flint Capital Campaign, they raised $5,100,000. The Michigan Community Capital Debt, one million nine hundred thousand committed. Uh, let me see. Community Projects Funding Grant Hub Federal Dollars, two million four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. New Market Tax Credit, five million thirty-six thousand four hundred dollars. And Michigan Economic Development Grant Law, seven million dollars. So, when you look at the Diverse funding. I, I'm not really seeing um, where the city of Flint fires us giving them a tax break, where we have actually funded any of this project and leveraging dollars and coming up with gap funding. That's I think that's what this looks like. So I, I'm not. 
get us two hundred thousand dollars to support this project. I'm done. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in the second round? If not, roll call, Madam Clerk. We are going to send two three zero four three six to Council. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Lachette? Yes. Ms. Worthen? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Lacey? Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no. The vote is seven yes, zero no. Resolution 230436 has been moved to council. We are now moving on to resolution 230437. The chair recognizes the council person in the fourth ward. There has been a motion to move 230437 to council. Is there a second? Support. It has been moved and properly supported. Is there a discussion? Yes. The chair recognizes the council person in the third ward. Can you to Joel? Can you come and approach? Um, right. Can you explain to us? Um, and I know you sent me an email. I didn't send it to all my colleagues, but I will. Oh, can you take the table, Brian? Could you explain to us what this hundred and twenty-five thousand for this project that yep, yeah, this is who are not familiar with this. Of course, yes. Yeah. So, so this is a, a currently vacant, had been an apartment building for years on South Grand Travers in between Court Street and uh, the river, between really Court Street and South Second Street. Um, and uh, it's just a development that we're working on to restore it back into a five unit uh, affordable housing uh, building there. Um, so we've been fortunate to receive about $400,000 for this from uh, Michigan's Missing Middle Housing Program. Uh, and then this $125,000 would go to advance us towards finishing it. So um, just a smaller kind of five unit development, um, but as Council Member Carter mentioned, you know, all these units add up when we're just short on housing. How, how many bedrooms do we need? Um, there is a mix in the units, just a second. So our proposal would be of these five units, it'd be one two bed, one bath, one two bed, one and a half bath, and three one bed, one bath units. So two two bedroom units, three one bedroom units. Um, are these affordable homes or are these um, high, high market rate, rate once you guys finish? Yep, so these are all affordable units. The restrictions of the uh, missing middle housing fund, which are going to support this, require that they be limited between 60 and 120% of our area median income. Um, so there will be some folks that are at about the median income or just above, but uh, we would be able to run out to anywhere above 120% of our area median income. Um, I'm looking at the, what you sent us. Um, I would love to have had some pictures. Yes, well, and, and right now I, I have the exterior image of it, and then basically all we have are existing floor plans. Um, the units are basically going to be a lot of the existing floor plans, the same as some of the old ones. We'll do updated interiors, but it's basically, basically abandoned five units now, and there's five new units. So the exterior won't be dramatically different from what you see right now, except it won't have boarded up windows and, and stuff like that. Okay. I'm going to ride by here tomorrow and look and see what it um, looks like. I'm going to support this project. <coughs> but like y'all um, trying to move some people in a jacked up building, I'm coming for you. <laughs> you know where to find us. Okay. Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes the council in the second board. All right, so um, Joe, I see that on this sheet, you all applied for one, So you all applied for two things in, in this category, because I have summaries for three. So how many applications did you all apply for in this category? Yeah, I believe our initial application, it was 716. There's a building next door to this that's 714 South Grand Travis. It's a similar story. I put these as four units. Um, and then we also put an application for some funding for the uh, kind of historic slate roof over on the Oak Street Senior Apartments. Okay, so, so you said one for 716. Just, just Read it, read it back. Yep. 
Bevel for 2765. 724, sorry, 724. Mm -hmm. You said 724? Correct. Um, is, is 724 the Oak Street Senior Apartment? Nope, that's just, that's right next door. Although, I, again, I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head on this one. I think that's the other application, plus the Oak Street Senior Apartments, that's 1,000 Oak Street. Okay, because um, the reason why, why I'm asking is I, I want to make sure, I want to get through the entire category. Mm -hmm. I want to look at everyone who the committee and who the mayor recommended, and I also want to take a look at the people that were not recommended, mm -hmm. and or the projects that were not recommended. And so seeing that two of your projects are on the list, but I have write-ups for three of your applications within the same time. I just want to um, keep that in line and keep this in mind as we allocate these funds, if that makes sense. So if they recommend the two, and we are in agreement with the two that they recommended, then we can just bolt those up and send you all a denial letter for the third. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so I just want to make sure that we're closing out entire categories uh, when we do this. So that's why I was asking the question. All right, and so yeah, yeah, so um so we do not have a resolution for the second one. It says remove, the mayor removed it, but
So looking at looking at this resolution and it's about transitional housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, funded project renovate five transitional houses. Is anyone here for maintenance too? Anyone here for the maintenance too? Okay, seeing that no one is here from the main institute, I will go ahead and proceed. Um, I had a conversation um, with um, the main institute, and I was made aware that they are applying for $100,000 to renovate five transitional houses. And these transitional houses are to help returning citizens that have drug problems, help them get reinculturated back into society. And instead of using ARPA funds for this, I feel that this was perfect for opioid dollars because if, if you all look at the opioid list that was in your box, the opioid fund, it covered things like this. It covers um, housing. And this, we don't need to use ARPA funds for open, you know, when we use opioid funds for the same exact thing. And this way, we'd be able to use $100,000 to fund another project. So, so that will be my, my amendment. I would like to amend this resolution to take the $100,000 out of the opioid fund instead of the ARPA fund because they're using it for transitional housing to help return a citizen experiencing drug issues. And I shall move. All right, there is a motion to amend resolution 230438, um, and that is moving the funding source. Is there a second? It has been properly supported by the uh, councilwoman in the sixth ward. Is there a discussion? So, um, Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the councilperson in the second ward. Thank you. So if my colleagues will just take a gander at the opioids, at the Michigan Opioid Settlement Plan, the spend plan for the fiscal year of 2023, um, it speaks on that. And they're talking about um, in this in the third paragraph. And the third paragraph says recovery, expand recovery housing sites to offer stable, safe, and sober housing options that are critical to those in recovery. So uh, this alone is a, the reason why I am asking my colleagues to support this as we take the money out of the settlement fund because it's coming out of the Michigan um, settlement spending plan, which I put in every month's box. So it only makes sense to take these funds here so we can use that $100,000 from ARPA for another organization that's doing great things in the city. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. The chair recognizes the council person in the third ward. Thank you. Um, so this is a um, project in the first ward, I believe. First, last, third, I'm not sure where all the house is at. But um, one, one, two, and three? Okay. So I, I would say get them both, this and opium funding, because even though they're trying to rehab five, they have more than five homes that they are um, projected to be working on. They only looking for funding for five homes. So um, one of the conversations that we had when I talked was um, five hundred thousand. I said, "Well, that ain't what you asked for. You asked for one hundred thousand. So you know, five hundred thousand is. So I, I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not against what you're saying, Dr. Lewis." Um, with moving opium money, I just would like to see them get both. But if I need to move that, because we got five votes to do that, I'll go that route, but I would prefer for him to get the 100,000 out of this that they already applied for, 
an additional hundred thousand of um, opium that will give them two hundred thousand dollars because this is something on the north side of Flint. I've um, rolled around, and if you guys haven't rolled around and looked at their work, because you know when I was looking at these resolutions, I was riding by looking at his work. So I went down Parkway, Midway, and looked at the houses that they were um, looked at the vacant lots that they were rehabbing, and they are being impactful in targeted areas. And the residents like it. It's still it's a lot of houses need to get torn down too. But you can you can see them transitioning a neighborhood and making it look good. And because they applied for ARPA funding for a hundred thousand dollars, I just don't want to. Um, I, I I don't want to see us take away. 100000 that they applied for that was recommended by the mayor and administration. We can give them that 100000 and, in addition, give them 100000 more, which would give them $200,000, which would give us an opportunity to try to see some money being invested in the North Side of Flint, especially in the first or third ward or wherever where um, it is uh, predominantly a lot of abandonment and lack of investment. So the 200000 will be better for me than just taking away and be like, okay, because we're going to give you 100000 here. But I hear what you're saying because you're trying to free up some money to be able to move somewhere else. But his projects are, the funding for his projects is much greater than even what we give them. Remember the question. So how would you feel if we met halfway and gave him what he asked for, which was $150,000? Somebody go get Mr. Mace. Mace, you know, we talked about having back, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Request information. Why don't we just give him $150,000 worth of opium? Well, somebody go get the I, mayor. I, I'll, wait, I'll wait my second round because I see my colleague down there shaking her head, so I don't know what that means. She agree with me or you, so I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to wait, and once she get done talking, I'll hear what y'all say, and then I'll make my decision after that. But I just know that they work is much greater than what we give them. Okay, thank you. I'm done. All right, thank you, Councilman Murphy. Um, Councilman Burns, was that enough? You want to speak? Uh, I didn't realize I did that out loud, but that was not, I agree. I went to after Council on Murphy Carr. She has her hand on her butt. Oh, no. <laughs> we can't see. Okay. Right, we can't see. All right, Council Carver. Council Carver, please. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, and I, and I hear you, Quincy. I'm, I'm with you as far as why don't we go ahead and give them what, what they've been, um, um, recommended for, yeah. which is the hundred thousand, and then also look at some of the opiate money and and yeah. perhaps give them some of that because money. Yeah, they are doing great yeah. work. Money. And there's an, that's another need here in our community, and it's bad. And and we gotta we gotta make sure we get people housed. Um, and so I would be willing to go ahead and pass this resolution and then look at giving them some money out of the opium uh, fund. And what are they going to do with that building right there on the corner of um, Genius Park? Yeah, Genius Park. Point, oh. point of information. What's your name? To you, to the speaker, he applied for funding also to help with gap funding. They also receive funding for that building. It don't, it don't take place, I think, until in January when that money is received for them to do renovation, but they still have to build gap and funding for right. holding that. Yeah, so, so I, would, I would say, yeah. let's, let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and approve what we have, and let's see what we can do to, to perhaps get them more money. Yeah, very well said. So, and that's, that's, that's okay. all. So I'll 
be voting um, no on this um, amended, amended um, motion. Thank you. Madam Chair. Madam Chair recognizes the council member before the board. Yes, um, I'm not going to support this resolution for or for the um, motion made by Councilwoman in the second board for the reason that I'm not sure that the opioid settlement can be used for returning citizens who were not convicted of drug offenses. And so I, <clears throat> if, if it can be. Yeah, I don't know what that stipulation, who put that stipulation in there or why, but I will find out. Good. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so, so what, so what, what I, I'm with today, let's take care of these, um, to my colleagues, let's take care of these five transitional houses yes. with the opioid dollars. And again, I was at the same meeting that you were at with the Attorney General, and so hopefully my colleague will take my word for it that I heard what she said, and then I supplied the paperwork, then I read the paperwork, so you can use the money, let's not wait, let's get it popping and done, and give them their $150,000 for this specific uh, thing right here, and then we can come back and see if they apply for the renovation of the Martin Luther King the Park property well, or transparent finance. So, um, it, so yeah. So, so can we amend this amended um, motion? So instead of making it a hundred thousand, make it one fifty. Or just one second. Is that a question or a motion? There's a question. Madam Clerk. possible for us to amend the amended motion because um, I amended the motion by taking it out of the opioid fund, but I would like to amend the motion to take 150 out of opioid, so I want to amend the amount. Because you haven't voted on the point one, um, I believe you can make an amendment to your motion to amend. Because actually, the motion would have been uh, so the, a substitute. Okay, so, so you haven't voted on the point one yet. So you want to just make it a point one to change the funding source as well as the dollar amount. Yes. Okay. So, um, so I see my time is up. Is it possible for me to do that? I think it's okay. Okay, so, um, Madam I, I, Chair, go ahead. The Chair recognizes the full board councilperson. I'd like to make a motion to amend um, <coughs> the motion to $150,000. So, support. Call the question. Okay. Is there a support? Oh, support. All right, it's been supported. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Worthen. Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? No. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Murphy Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. McDowell? Yes. The vote is four yes, three no. The vote is four yes, three no. Base. All right, the vote is four yes, three no. Um, no we'll vote on the amended motion. No. no. Call the question. Fail. Right, so she needs to fail to demonstrate that if anyone else wants to speak. Ms. Devon, Ms. Frederick? I haven't voted on this. The floor is yours, Councilwoman Burns. Thank you. Um, now, for you, Madam Chair, for Councilman Lewis, so you're stating you want to do 150 out of opioid, mm -hmm. and we're going to leave that out for a while. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
and then we can reallocate. I, I, and we actually can, I don't think we just limit it to just the one tip because we use an opioid. We got more flex in that opioid account because I don't even think we have an opioid plan yet. Do you have, Chair to Michelle and Sparks Green, do we have an opioid uh, plan for opioid dollars that we're using? I think we're I think we're working on it right now and I know that okay, we're working, working on it. Yeah. So if we wanted to, and I think some of my colleagues, it is cold and it is cold. Yes, it yes. Is. <laughs> Clerk, it's, it's, can, what's the heat? Yeah. I'm just waiting for you. Oh, because you're crazy. Speaking to the mic. So um That's how do we come on So we can actually, because, oh, and if I was listening to my colleagues, there was a negotiation, like a, a meeting of the minds is to, instead of 200, do 150. Now, this is some other colleagues saying, it is the, I mean, this is the north side. I mean, it is devastating. And this is really a very nominal amount to be giving to uh, the project for the amount of work that it does to the community. And so, but we can always come back. I would like to leave our for long as we scrounge and to do stuff, especially if we can use opioid. And we do not have an opioid budget or plan yet. The only thing that was approved for the opioid was the, um, the public health, budget and public health. And then they're now putting a budget together as far as the opioid use. So yes, right. we can still. And but it's not like our ARPA budget, you know, we, we, and it's not like our grant, so it's not like we have a budget. So we've got, um, and if Mr. Moore is back there, Mr. Moore, do you know how much we have in our opioid CFO? Do you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Philip Moore? Um, do you know how much we have in our opioid account that we do have? Because if we can free up ARPA, because ARPA is running, I mean, we have an hour for work here. How much do you know? Good evening. Um, how much is in our opioid settlement account? <coughs> we get about approximate is good. I can tell you how much we receive on an annual basis, which is about four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. On an annual basis, but didn't right. we have a lump sum into that account? Pardon? We have a lump sum. I, I don't know what the balance is right now, but that's what we receive every year. Could you give me that for you, Kathy? I, Your I computer did. might work better than mine. <laughs> no. Yes, I can get I can Could, get could you please, so we can share that? I, I prefer to use this for opioid, um, use that fund, and let ARPA um, use that for something else. This, ARPA, we have more limited, and this seems like it fits into a, a category, and we talk about drug use, and we know drug uses. It's, it's so overwhelming. You know, you can't even go buy cough medicine without showing your driver's license. Yeah. So if you could please let me, so you said we get annually 400,000. Um, is that part of the sample settlement? Mm -hmm. Yes. And when is that deposited? Oh. Uh, I don't know how much of it was, I can't remember off the top of my head, how much was allocated for the public health office. Uh, we received approximately 1. I believe 1.7 million or so last year as the initial distribution, and we've received about 400, 450,000 or so this year as this year's distribution. Um, I don't know how that extends forth into the future because of the way in which that happens. It also doesn't reflect uh, any payments for the most recently entered into uh, settlement for the opioid claims against the, uh, you might recall that about earlier this year, you authorized settlement of against another four or five defendants, including uh, yeah, CBS the, and, and yeah, the drugs. Yes. Uh, so we haven't, we won't receive, start receiving distributions from those settling parties until I believe. Okay, Chuck, if I next got less than 10 seconds, can I get a balance of what are all of my colleagues? what's in the opioid, so we'll be able to know. I am for taking this out of the opioid itself. Thank you, sweet time. 
Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to yes. speak? Uh, right? yes. The chair recognizes council member. Yes, I, um, I just was thinking because we had this application already in that we could go with the hundred thousand or the hundred and fifty thousand. But if you guys um, want to move and then do the opium, because he applied for two funding, and then if one of this says no funding for renovations of the Martin Luther King and Flint Park commercial building, I'm not sure what's going on with that. We'll look at that in the near future. Maybe we can use funding to help fund that project with him. But um, all I'm saying is um, Leon Elamine does a lot of great work. And I rode up and down those streets to look at his work. And I see an impact in the community. And whether it's 150,000 that we give him, 100,000 in addition or whatever, it's people like him that's minorities that's out here that came from the trenches. And I remember when he first started to see where he coming from, where he came from, to get out of prison, to come back to society and to be able to give back to the community and not only give back to the community, give housing for uh, people who um, got out of prison and for those who have family members or friends who have went to prison to come home to try to become independent and go and uh, apply for a apartment or a house and then run their name and they got a background, they do a check and when you check their name, because of them being incarcerated for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, they can't get an apartment, they can't get a house. What he is doing is opening up doors for those who have been incarcerated that cannot find housing. They taking housing in the hood, renovating them, making them look nice. They training the um, people who just got out of prison. They got transitional homes for them to move in and live in. One of the homes is across the street from my auntie, and I was concerned when he did the transitional home across there because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't want nobody messing with my auntie or trying to do anything. It's been very peaceful. They got a hoop house over there. They do great things. They they taking the vacant lots and they cleaning them up. And when I say cleaning up those vacant lots, they going through there and cleaning all of that brush off from um, those vacant lots, converting them, making them nice, beautiful green space. And there's people like Leon and the Main Institute. And then he got a um, committee of people, diverse people, not just people of color, but a diverse group of people of all races that's working behind the scenes to make them as great as they've been doing out there. So all I'm saying is, whatever we do, it's people like him that makes me feel good about wanting to fund them to help them because not only is we helping them, we helping other people that is looking for housing that's less likely to get apartments or housing they making the first ward look good. They making the third ward look good. And they going in one block at a time. So he ain't all scattered everywhere. Because the need is much greater than what he's doing. So all I'm saying is, I, I, I'm for giving 100,000 of the ARPA funds and 150,000 of the um, opium funds to them and just see what they do. We done put out, we done gave people millions of dollars in this community. We had 94 million all together. So for someone on the far end of the north end that really, you don't see um, this kind of projects going on, and I'm not saying it ain't needed, especially on the east side, it's really needed. But um, I'm just saying, I want to support him as much as, not him, the group, because it ain't just him, it's a group of them. Yeah. I'm done.
I know you is. All right, is there anyone else? Yes, madam. All right, the chair recognizes the council lady. Now, and, and I hear what every, everybody's saying about using the uh, opioid um, funds. I'm hesitant because I want to see, I want to see the budget. I want to see how much has been used. I want to see how much is coming in. I just want to see an opioid um, settlement budget um, of what we have thus far. Um, so with that, I'm gonna, I'm probably not gonna vote to um, vote on this amendment right now, just because I wanna see the budget. Um, and I hear what you're saying, Councilwoman Lewis. I hear what everyone's saying, but I want to um, I want to look at everything and I want to see how much money we have. So that's why I was pushing to go ahead and give them what they need right now, and then perhaps we can give them more out of the opioid. Um, so I'll be voting no on this um, amendment budget. Uh, amended uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in the second round? Two, four, six, three, and five have spoken. Anybody else? No. With that said, just a couple words. Um, you've heard from my colleagues the amazing work that the May Institute has done in this community. Um, you even have a personal testimony of how when you give people the opportunity to return to society and actually um, participate in society in the same way that everyone else is participating, how that literally can change lives. These people's testimonies can also be used to prevent others from even going down that same path. Um, Made Institute does so much amazing, amazing work in this community. I would ask about one thing is that um, just to kind of streamline some things if the uh, administration could just give us budgets and things like up front, up front. That would be amazing. With that said, um, we are voting to send resolution 230438.1 to council, and this is amended to give 150,000 from the opioid funding um, to the Maine Institute. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes. Yes. No. Burns? Yes. 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 The vote is six yes, one no. The vote is six yes, one no. Resolution 230438.1 has been moved to council. Uh, we are now moving on to resolution 230439. Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the councilperson in the fourth ward. I make a motion to move 230438, 230439, 230440 to council. So just 439 and. Oh, zero. We are did 340. Yeah, we did. Sorry, skip that one. So 439 and 440? Yes, ma'am. Um, there's been a motion to move 230439 and 230440. Council, is there a second? Support. It has been moved and properly supported. Okay, Madam Chair. The chair recognizes the council person in the second ward. All right, so I see that they have, that Genesee County Habitat for Humanity has applied for two items of funding, and one of them is for $150,000, and the other one did not make it cheap because it was not recommended. And so they both say, obviously, gap for residential mixed use projects. 
the city. As Genesee County Habitat for Humanity seek gap funding to support our 3D printed house project on the south side of Flynn downtown. This high performance home will be built to meet the following objectives. Okay, nope, that's not the one that they recommended. So the one that they recommended is um, the, the Sylvan, the Sylvan Court project helps families to create optimal outcomes by combining <coughs> I hand up through our Almost Home program with home ownership opportunities close to Flint growing downtown. Silver Court is an eight unit development town comprising of four townhomes and two sets of duplex with a landscape south southern gateway to Memorial Park between them. The four townhomes were completed in 2021 and the Almost Home program to help families who currently don't qualify for home ownership achieve their goals. The two sets of duplexes will be um, Caliades and uh, I think that's how you said. Sorry, I messed it up. And sold as individual units. They will be accessible for people with disabilities and will include a first floor bed and bath. Priority for these units will be given to prospective homeowners that are physically impaired and are taking care of someone that is physically impaired. So what we have here with this almost home project, it says this will be um, eight units. Um, two sets of four townhomes. They are being set aside for the disabled and their caretakers. Again, just like Ms. Carter said, I'm with everything housing, and it's looking like that it is helping out the, the, the disabled. I'm totally before helping out the disabled, and so when I look at how much they asked for, just wanted to be clear, they wanted 150,000 to complete these eight units, and the, com the committee recommended 150,000, which is to be fully funded. And then I look at what the administration, what they recommended, and they recommended it to be fully funded as well. Um, so I am in support of that because it fulfills the housing criteria, the community recommendation said 150, the mayor said 150, and for the investment of $150,000, we're about to create um, eight new units that are going to serve several Flint res residents that would not otherwise receive services. <coughs> so I'm definitely for giving them half that for humanity, $150,000 for this project. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Anyone else for the first time? Yes. All right, the chair recognizes the fifth ward council person. Um, where is where is this located again? Golden Court, almost home project. Where is it located? Does anyone know? Good question. I'm trying to look it up myself. Um, um Miss Sparks Green. I'm sorry, I don't see the address on, on here for it. It just says it's um it's gateway to the memorial park. Okay. Um, yep. What is your request? So through you to the councilman in the fifth ward, um, these appear to be, according to this article um, with Flint side, mm -hmm. these appear to be the townhomes where I met you, 
Where, where they had the groundbreak. Yeah, so, so that's all. Right. So what, what are they, what are they again? Well, Miss Braxton. So, um, so, so we're going to read or something or what? So through you, Madam Chair, to the Commonwealth mm -hmm. Fifth Ward. So they're going to add eight additional units oh. for the disabled. Okay. And their caregivers. Okay. I mean, that's, that's good. So that's what they call that, salt and salt I didn't realize that. Okay, I figured out. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Lewis uh, explained to me where they are. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for welcoming us. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, um, Ms. Sparks. <laughs> That's, that's all that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this resolution in the first round? Anyone else in the first round? Anyone in the second round? Is there anyone who would like to speak to resolution 230439 in the second round? Nobody for 230440? Okay. All right. Roll call. And right now we are. Voting to send resolutions 230439 and 230440 to council. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Murphy. Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no. Resolutions two three zero four three nine and two three zero four four zero have been moved to council. Now moving on to appointments. Resolution two three zero three five three. Madam Chair, the chair recognizes the council person in the fourth ward. Make a motion to move two three zero three five three to council. So there has been a motion to send two three zero three five three to council. Is there a second? Support. All right, it's been moved and properly supported. Any discussion? Yes. Councilman Murphy, you are recognized. This is the uh, resolution. I think um, Councilwoman Jerry was the target left early. So um, Councilwoman Judy Christie put this post on this back okay. because this was something that you um, put on hold. So just to refresh your memory on this. Um, this is one, and the reason why it's still here is because you wasn't able to, and we knew this was something that you did. So that's why it's still here today. I'm done. Thank you. Madam Chair. The Chair recognizes the council person in the fifth ward. And thank you guys. I, I think I had separated it before because I wanted to, first I want to clear this up. This is not a fifth appointment. I have a fifth ward um, member on the Ethics and Accountability Board. This is a mayoral appointment. This is one of the mayor's appointments um, for the Ethics and Accountability Board. Record. But I wanted to find out from our clerk um, how many appointments does the mayor have I know that each council member have, and I wanted to see what all is filled and what's not as far as the ethics and accountability board. Because it seems to me um, I think we did get an email. Is the attorney here? <coughs> attorney Kim? Yeah, I got an email. Yeah, and I know. Point, I saw the and that's why I separated. The chair recognizes. What's your point of Thank you to the speaker. Are you aware that um, the mayor has two appointments on the ethics and the Okay, and I wanted to. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, through you to Clerk um, Donahue. Hmm? Do you have a list of the appointments of the Ethics and Accountability Board? I don't 
I can, I actually have one on my computer. Is there a specific, are you looking for just generally or are you looking for just, the? Just the Ethics and Accountability Board, is there a slot vacant? Yes, the, uh, the nomination for that's before you is for the vacant slot that is, that is one of the mayor's two selections. Okay, okay. I believe um, there may be one other one, but that's a council member vacancy. I have to double check my list. Okay. So <laughs> I didn't want to call you out, but I don't know. I'll call it so, out. So, um, so this is going to go for that vacant, um, for the mayor's vacant slot. Yes, this will be one okay. of the mayor's two two selections. Okay. Um. Now, also, I'm I'm just going to make this clear. The Ethics and Accountability Board is a very important board, um, in my opinion. When I look at people that serve on the Ethics and Accountability Board, I look at people that's going to be fair and be ethical. And, and I've said this before. The Facebook thing, people getting on Facebook, making their derogatory comments, just nasty comments. I'm not for that. I'm just really not for that. And I know some of my colleagues here that sits on this council, y'all be on Facebook and just cut up. I have a Facebook page. I don't, I don't get on there and, and make comments on Facebook talking about my colleagues and all that on Facebook. I don't do that. Now, and, and, and that thing right there, you know, and, and I get it. Everybody have freedom of speech or whatever. But when I think about somebody serving on the Ethics and Accountability Board, I want you to be um, top-notch <laughs> ethical. <laughs> you got to be ethical. So with that, I will not be voting on um, on this um, appointment. I'll be voting no for this Bye. appointment. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm done after. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this resolution? Anyone else who would like to speak on this resolution? All right. Um, second round, anyone else who would like to speak on this resolution? Second round, going twice. Does anyone like to speak on this resolution? All righty, roll call, Madam Clerk. I mean, excuse me, disappointment. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, one no. Resolution 230354 has been moved to council. 
motion to adjourn. Support. There's a motion to adjourn. It's properly supported. Roll call that third. Yes. 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 Seven yes. So this meeting is adjourned. This meeting of special affairs is adjourned. All right, so we're looking to resume council in approximately 10 minutes.
swapping heads. Yeah. Hey, about time you show up, man, for the rest of the game. They coming up? Okay, okay, wait, okay, that'd be cool. Okay, that'd be cool. Okay, no, no, no.
start the council meeting momentarily.
The time is now 10 o'clock p.m. and the Flint City Council meeting is now being called to order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Present. 
Ms. Five members present. We have we have five members present. Now we will move on to the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilman Quincy Murphy. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we will take the time to remember those that have passed away. Does anyone have anyone that they would like to acknowledge at this time? Yes. Mr. Murphy. Um, I would like to, um, for all of us to remember um, former President Carter White, who they is getting ready to do a lot of labor rest within the next couple of days. Um, and also um, Ray Sims, he used to um, work at the um, Coleman School downtown Atlanta. He passed away. He worked there for many years. Oh. All right, thank you, Mr. Murphy. Is there anyone else that would like to acknowledge anyone that may have passed away? Madam Chair. Ms. Murr. Um, Sheila Dunn, or Sheila Hubbard Dunn, she passed away to her her film. She served her community and she served her church very well. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Burns. Uh, anyone else would like to acknowledge anyone else? Okay, so seeing that I am the last to go, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Dante Juan McNeil. Mr. Dante Juan McNeil. Remember him and his family in a very special way. So, seeing that we have no one else to acknowledge, we will go ahead and call for the moment of silence right now. All right, thank you. Now it's time for the prayer of the blessing, led by Councilwoman Kamusha. All minds are clear. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Just first and foremost, thank you for this day and time. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your favor. Thank you for allowing us all to gather here together today. I ask that you keep us as we go to our respective homes. Lord God, that you would not allow your congregation to come our way. I ask that uh, we would make decisions on behalf of the residents that uplift their lives and make them whole. Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for those who are suffering. And who have lost loved ones, we ask that you would be with them, that you would comfort and keep them, that you would give them your peace, which surpasses all understanding. It is in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 Now it's time for the reading of the disorderly person city sub subsection. Any person that persists in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of the Flip City Code, Section 31, King disorderly conduct, assault and battery disorderly person, and will be subject to arrest for misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Violators shall be removed from meetings. So now it's time for requests for changes and or additions to the agenda. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes, I would like to um, move the um, resolution of the um, second reading the acting of ordinance um, 230424 and 230425. I would like to um, move that. Okay, um, right after public hearing. Oh, right after I want to move in first. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're looking at. Madam Chair, um, I would like to move resolution 230391 um, right before the public hearing. You did 391 where? 
before the public hearing. Before the public hearing. All right, so 230391 will go right before the public hearing. Objection. Oh, sorry, what's your objection? You want me to the objection? <laughs> okay. to um, debate on it. The resolution that I um, worked with you on to get the training for council, is that ready and prepared? Because I, I didn't hear you say that at all. The resolution for training? The, the training for all city council members. No, that doesn't have to be done by resolution. I can't hear you. That doesn't have to be done by a resolution. The, 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 I was going to add a special order to discuss um, the budget for that training that you were asking for. So there was never nothing being prepared for me to present today? Not for the training. There was going to be a discussion. Now, you don't have to do a resolution. A 
about it because there's a budget issue that I have with that training and the parliamentary request. So I wanted to discuss it with council. But if you decide to do the training, we don't want to do a resolution. There's a budget set aside for it. I just have to step with the training. So I would have a plug in that. I would like to add that on a discussion item. I thought it was going to be together in some kind of written format. I know I was working on some, but um, I guess it's however it is. Well, yes. I really wanted to do this the day we brought in the president and vice president, but we got so much going on. It can come at the end once we get done with everything else. Okay, so that'll be right before uh, final council? Yeah. Okay. All right, so seeing that we only have one item to vote on, we will now vote on moving resolution 230391. Madam Chair. Right. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Um, did we get the resolution number where you put in, you would like to censure council member Tanya Burns for conduct on becoming a council member? Did you give that a, a number? No, so that'll be resolution number one. Thank you. And resolution number one. Can we move that? Um, Yes. Yes. The vote is three yes, three no. The vote is three yes, three no. That agenda change failed. All right, so now that we have completed the cluster changes in our addition to the agenda, we will move on to the public hearing. So we are on to public hearing 230-424.6. The public hearing on ordinance number 230424. Public hearing for ordinance number 230424. In order to amend the code of the city of Flint by amending chapter 18, article 1, section 18-4.1 for Marion Hall Limited uh, Dividend Housing Association, LLC, also known as the Marion Hall Department. Uh, Attorney Kim, do you have anything that you would like to uh, no, I'm not. This isn't my. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, so, anyone would like to speak on this public hearing? I believe the Marion Hall is on Court Street, across the street from Woody Junior High School. But senior citizen, I'm Aaron Earl Mitchell. Uh, I speak on this because you people of Flint always talk down on senior citizens before they even become a senior citizen. You don't want certain people to be a senior citizen where they can live in the YMCA and get fed by them, the new generation in the new apartments over there, from, over there in front of the bus station. And uh, 
and, uh, and you fight because we seen you want a house painted and, and miss. So Shaq just got, uh, by the way, get your crew told for being the first chair lady of this year, Mr. Shaq. And you've done a good job because I'm still here. <laughs> you, look at it, Miss Worthy, know I'm, Miss Priestley, know I'm, talk, know I'm talking about. You always, you didn't want to shake the popo on me because the popo got to be dealt with. You see how the chief of police jumped up, lied about Miss Mohammed, talking about he done something and he said, that's not true, call me Mohammed a lot, right in front of everybody. And, and, and nobody addressed, addressed the chief of police. And that's what, that's why Miss the Murphy Ward is getting messed up right now as we speak. Like Miss the second ward lady talking about the reason why she canceled the thing because she saw about 40 people laying out dead with that dope stuff and, talk, and all that. And they ain't said nothing about Thanksgiving. And you know, come on, breaking up the form and Murphy up there on Flint, on Parkway Street. That's something worse than that. The people's. He ought to see me now. The neighbors want to know how to get up in front of the city hall where they can address Murphy about. It's a death over there. Nobody addressed yet. Murphy probably know what I'm talking about. Because his mama done, his mama done died over there and, and he and they jumping on the, he was talking to me. He talked to me like he talking to Murphy, I guess. He was trying to get his point across and he got a three-year-old son and it and he got about the school teacher talking about. Two years old trying to get a head start, but they gotta wait till January because a one, two days late and the dudes come out smiling, using cell phone, and, and they don't the mama wanna put him in this special school they talking about, and y'all don't in the meanwhile, you're messing up, you're breaking up families all the way, and Murphy got over there act like it ain't nothing to it. People and and the dude and the get I don't see why the dude ain't coming in now while I'm talking. I said, when well, you see me, come up to me and then I'm gonna address you to the councilman, which I done got rid of the councilman. I mean, I stopped for y'all and me talking. Just let the people talk when it's up and deal with work. Anyone else would like to speak during this public hearing? And, um, and so, just a reminder, the public hearing is about specifically the Marion Hall of Apartments. <coughs> Please proceed. I don't know nothing about the Marion Hall of Apartments. So yeah, well, but well, that's what the hearing is about. So if not, wait to public speak. I'm going to have to wait on. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Seeing none, this public hearing is now closed. <coughs> so next, we will move on to public hearing 230425.6. Um, public hearing for ordinance number 230425, a public hearing for ordinance number 230425, in order to amend the code of the city of Flint by amending chapter 18, article 1, section 18-4.1, for 517 Martin Luther King Limited Dividend Housing Association, LLC, also known as 517 MLK Avenue Apartments. So do we have anyone that would like to speak on this public hearing specifically. And we want to make sure that we're talking exclusively about the public hearing. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Are you there yet? My name is R. L. Mitchell. I'm going to speak on this, simply on this L. Martin Luther King situation. They don't want certain people to address to live in that area because it's a racial thing. They don't want, they don't, they don't want the people who lived there before, they already got the houses thrown down. They don't want them to build generation houses like that and you, a new adult. And people won't speak up in that ward, and like Fifth Ward, she had to check Miss Priestley about the money and stuff. And now she, what, Miss, Miss Carter took off. And uh, because all this stuff is talking about special education, special peoples in that neighborhood, Brown, what, what's the, what's the, Stored up. Well, that story out there already done. Anyway, take it. I let the people of Flint talk for themselves. You see where they at. They're always, I guess they'll watch the. Act. That's all I'm saying. Anyone else would like to speak on this specific public hearing? Anyone else would like to speak? 
Seeing none, this public hearing is now closed. Now the chair will entertain a motion to pass resolutions 230-424 and 420-425. Um, go ahead. So moved. All right, is there a second? Supported. Supported by Mr. Murphy. And this is the second reading and the enactment of the ordinances. So, is there any discussion? Yes. yes. Mr. Murphy. To you, to Joel, can you please come up here for um, the public and those who don't understand what this amendment, ordinance chapter 18, what is this dealing with, with the Marion Hall, so that people can be up to speed. So for a while now, um, Odyssey House, who operates out of Marion Hall, uh, has been looking to relocate. Uh, it's an older building that doesn't serve their clients particularly well uh, in substance use treatment. So we've been working with them to locate to a new building, a more modern. Which Can you then, speak up some? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, which then would be a little bit more modern and suit their needs better, um, which would then leave Marion Hall vacant. And this is the building at the corner of Grand, uh, University Avenue and Martin Luther King. Um, so then at Communities First, we are then working to both uh, renovate and restore Marion Hall, uh, which there would be 43 uh, brand new affordable apartments in that building, and then adjacent to it, construct a new five-story building that will include 90 apartments uh, in that building. That's why these are presented as two ordinances, one pertaining to the historic building, one pertaining to the new addition, um, for a total of 133 new uh, affordable and uh, 44 market rate, 89 affordable housing units on that site. So, um, what funding um, will the city capture? What is we capturing now versus what will be capturing if we approve this? Yeah, so right now, most of that block, since Odyssey House is a, a 501c3 nonprofit, it doesn't pay any property tax. Um, so our- Hold on, let me repeat what you said. So you're saying the property as it exists now has not been paying taxes at all. Mo yeah, most of because it. Because it's a 501c3. That's correct, yeah, most of it. There are, it, the whole block is about seven parcels. The biggest one is Odyssey House. All the together, whole block is seven yep, parcels? Correct. Um, All together, that block pays uh, a little over $2,000 a year in property tax. $2,000 a year. Yep, and uh, the pilot in the first year of, of operation of this building would pay the city about $46,000 okay. per year. So, Forty forty six thousand will be what we will be bringing in versus we only bringing in two thousand now, right? Yep. And then our estimate is that um, you know beyond that there'd be about sixty ish thousand in income tax revenue, about one hundred and fifty thousand in water sewer revenue, um, and then obviously the standard street light assessment fee uh, and things like that. So the overall revenue by our math to the city was about $260,000 a year through various 200 sources. 200 and how much? About $260,000 a year through various sources. But the pilot portion is 46,000. 46,000? Correct. Okay. Um, how much funding do you guys have secured now to, um, hold on for a minute, let me pause. <laughs> for this project and what's the gap for, and will y'all be coming to us for additional funding to help y'all with this project? Yeah, so right now we've received, uh, we've, uh, you know, through several grant applications and sources, both uh, state and local have got $15 million committed to the project already. The total cost is about $45 million. Uh, so right now there's a gap of $30 million. One reason we're before council this evening is that uh, later this week, we'll be applying to the Michigan State Housing Development Authority uh, in Lansing for funding through the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program to close that gap. 
Um, so that's sort of why this is so timely. As far as future requests to the city, we don't have any plan currently. Um, again, whether there's potential contingencies or um, we've often also talked about potentially support for things like environmental cleanup or site cleanup and prep, that could be something, but we have nothing currently written as far as future requests to the city. What's the 15 million that you guys have secured so far? Yep, so there's- What would that allow you the opportunity to do? Um, I mean, the 15 million that we currently have, I mean, it, we, we, we still probably could not get this project off the ground with that. Um, this additional funding is really key uh, because even between the two sites, right, the two structures, that 15 wouldn't, as, as by our math, I mean, it's still what it's allocated for, wouldn't pay the full cost of either of that. Um, so going to the state of Michigan to apply for these funds is what's gonna make this project doable. And um, things like a pilot are, are basically a prerequisite to even be competitive in the statewide application process. All right, you guys have a projected break, grind date, or yeah. you guys work to y'all secure the funding first before y'all break ground? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm always told uh, that we will do it as soon as possible. Um, but I mean, if things were to, let's say, as if we were going to apply for this round uh, through the state and be awarded, um, you know, the earliest we'd be thinking would be probably early 2025 and completing it in late 2026 with a 18 month construction timeline. But that's going to be contingent on if the state awards this project. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Absolutely. Anyone else like to speak in the first round? All right, so seeing no one, anyone else like to speak in the second round? All right, thank you, Mr. Arnold. So we will go ahead and we will call for the vote to approve the second reading and the enactment of ordinances of resolution 230424 and 230425. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Yes. Priestley? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 The vote is six yes, zero no. Um, resolution two three zero four two four and two three zero four two five um, passes. All right, so now we move on to public speaking. Do we have any public speakers, Madam Clerk? First public speaker is Darcel Robinson. Moore, resident of the second ward, uh, a fan of coming down here and watching the council. Uh, I got to commend you guys for not quitting, but y'all stay into it, and eventually you will find a way to get it done. Um, I've heard so much eye-opening events with all of the different help that you guys are trying to do and dealing with, but I just kind of want you to remember one cause. And that causes the people of the city of Flint. We 
know, it's great to do all these here wonderful things with this amount of money that you have for now because you probably won't be getting it again. So I just want to say it like this. At the end of the day, it comes down to jobs, bringing some good jobs into the area. Jobs is going to make the difference if you get to stay in a lot of these places that you're trying to bring in here. But if you don't have a job and you're not able to pay, you won't be able to pay your lights, you won't be able to stay. We need to be able to turn back to a great history that we had here in Flint. I like to be able to say it like this here. Flint is not Disneyland, and it'll never be Disney World. Flint is the workplace, and we need to get back to work. And that way we can go to Disneyland and we can go to Disney World and we can pay our rent and be able to have a place to stay. We can be able to reach out and help our neighbors close by within the city as well as in the county and stand out in the state and let the rest of the country know that Flint is back open for business. I came here on a quest to um, bring in manufacturing into the area, custom manufacturing, and I got to get back on point on that because it's really needed. At the end of the day, Flint needs a place to be able to go to work, and we need to put the we're, uh, a help wanted sign back on, so like they did in the past, they'll look from the rest of the nation and we'll give them a place to come and work at. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Ariel Mitchell. I'm Mario Mitchell. Uh, good evening, America. Uh, like the last speaker just talked about, Flint is it's an industrial city, and we the people demand generational houses. Just like uh, they're talking about the twenty-five thousand dollar difference. The house cost one hundred and twenty. They gonna give us one hundred twenty-five thousand, but we ask for one hundred and fifty thousand. And, and they got this new program, they'll uh, chip in the rest of the money. But I already did that and went through that, but I'm not violent it enough. That's why we the people don't get our houses any mean possible. As you heard on the last council meeting, the lady said we must fight for what we, we're going to live, live in these houses. Just like in Burton, Michigan. I built a church out there and I built about 120, was going to build 125 generation houses, but Burton fought against it, and it even kicked me out of my generation of property right behind mine. It's called Twin Pack, right on Atherton Road, not far down from the Gentleman Club. I turned that club out too for hanging out in there too. I mean, but it's back. Anyway, these, these new laws, people's making with our money, we the Flint people, we don't appreciate using Murphy Third Ward to do, to do their diligently stuff on us, we the people, and using Second Ward lady, Dr. Lewis, call us up a doctor and, oh, she must be Republican. Cause you know I must be, I am Democratic. Democrat. Because I come from the South, straight up here, and landed over on St. John Street and left. Matter of fact, every house up, and then, and to that school teacher over there, Miss Worthy, talking about she don't even let her students come in and learn a lesson and want to protect her. All, I, all the people want to know what to do, black or white, to ask you that. And, and she wanted to address that. Like she might get messed up. Some little kids probably put her up at the LL bar. They tore that down and have their own school teacher walking on her. And Miss, uh, Miss underestimate students. Talking up, don't let the students come to the educational city hall and, and always on their cell phone right now, looking down and even just a, that school teacher called us up, called the shop while Miss Mosey was doing her thing for the first time and, and what Miss Mosey? And she talking to me without saying a word. That's what Yes, dear. Understand. Only got 13 seconds to go. Can I finish? Understand. Okay. I can give a all right, next speaker, Madam Clerk. And the last speaker is LaRosa Patrick. Hello, everybody. I'm 
and my body deacon. Uh, my hope and desire is that I um, get used to seeing my face uh, because I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm in a fight. Uh, we're all in this fight. We're in a crisis here. And I want everybody to know we're in an opioid crisis. People are dying. And I want everybody to know that people are dying. Young kids, older people, they're dying. They're dropping like flies. We have to get this information out. We got to educate the community. We got to let them know about the resources that's out there. Uh, but before uh, we can help them to recover, we have to save their lives first because they're overdosing. And that's why I'm fighting so hard. That's why I'm always carrying the Narcan and, and going to different events and community um, resource fairs and you have it. Showing people how to use the Narcan. I want everybody to feel comfortable. I want them to feel comfortable using the Narcan because you never know when you're gonna need it. A lot of people say, I don't know anyone that's on drugs. Well, you, you really don't know. You don't know what that young person is doing that they the young person decided to try a pill. You just don't know. And one pill can kill. I want you guys to know that we need to come together. And this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here and I'm hoping that you pass the resolution for Donation for Love um, so that we can collaborate together, um, Donations for Love with other organizations and get this information out. Train the people how to use the Narcans. We need to have this on the news. We need to collaborate with large corporations. You know, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. And I'm just fighting so hard. And I hope you have it in your heart in order to release these funds um, so we can get this information out. Um, donations with love. Um, Darcel sits on the board for a Greater Prevention Coalition. And um, uh, it's about coming together, coming together to make this happen. And so we, if you look on the Facebook page, you'll see that we're out here, uh, my page and also Dar Darcel's page. Uh, we have been out here trying to save lives and we need money. We need money for the mannequins. We need money um, so that we can travel and show the people um, how it's, you know, it's done. We need money for the handouts. You know? So we're asking that you can please release this money uh, so that we can help our community. We can't do this alone. We cannot do this alone. So once again, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. How can you recover if you're dead? Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes public speaking. Now it's time for council response. Madam Chair. Oh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you, um, thank you to everyone that stuck around because it is 10.30 at night. So thank you to everyone that stuck around, specifically to um, the people with donations of love. Um, week after week, you know, he's been here persistent in talking about how important this training is, the education, the work that you do is for this community. We talk about the opioid deaths and the number of deaths that we've had. We talk about the number of deaths that can be prevented. Talk about the education, just with you being here persistently for a lot of months now, I've learned more than I've known um, before now. And so just thank you for your diligence. Thank you for your work. Thank you for wanting to save lives because that is essentially what you're doing. Thank you for educating our community and make us a better city. Thank you. All right, seeing that there's no one, I will go ahead and be the last to speak. Um, I echo the sentiments of the councilwoman in the seventh ward. You all have been coming here faithfully, educating and expressing the need for opioid training. Uh, you know, I, I know someone. Well, first, let me start with this. For one, now we have access to Narcan. So that's one major hurdle that we're over. The next hurdle is what you all are trying to do. You're trying to teach us how to use it. I know someone that used Narcan thinking it was nasal spray. Oh no! 
So that's why we need to make sure that it is a universal language in this community what Narcan stands for and how Narcan helps us. Because this person wasn't a dummy. This is a college degree, master's degree person. They were like, oh, okay, I have a code. Maybe I can use this. It sounds crazy, but if they can do it, I trust other folks may not know how to use it as well. So with that being said, it is essential that you teach us what Narcan is and how to appropriately use it in case of an emergency. A lot of times, it's not. It's not just for people that OD by willingly take drugs. Sometimes it's for children, helping them to bring the children back. Someone called me and told me that their, um, that their son gained custody of, uh, of their grandchild because the mother allowed the children to take um, opi opioids and they were so sluggish and stuff, it almost killed them. Ooh. They didn't have Narcan, nor did they have the training. This is the difference between life and death in our community. And, um, and I'm looking forward to choosing life. So thank you all for doing what you do. And also, let me say this again, thank you all for doing your demonstration in the Flint Public Schools. Thank you all for coming to Freeman and educating the Freeman parents. We appreciate you. All right, so with that being said, council response is now closed. So now we can move on to the consent agenda. Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. All right, there's a motion to approve the consent agenda. Any support? Support. All right, supported by Councilwoman Machat. Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley. I have one separation. Go ahead. It is resolution mm -hmm. 230413. 230413? Yes, ma'am. All right. Anyone else? All right, seeing no one else, we will go ahead and vote for approval of the consent agenda. Roll call, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry, um, Madam Chair, does the consent agenda include all of the add-on resolutions? Yep. And the add-ons that I provided you do not have um, specific dates. Did you want those enumerated? Shall we just go with because I, I have the terms and everything. Oh, speak up, Madam Clerk. Um, the, the resolution, the appointment resolutions that I provided to you don't have the term ending dates or term years, and, and the uh, attorney Kim has um, worked to provide that information. So I don't know if you wanted it noted for the record. <laughs> I'm going to go with it, but okay, just for the record. Yeah, thank you for noting that, Madam Clerk. Mr. Murphy. This um, amendment for resolution, this is not in here, is it? The 230367 amendment ordinance chapter one general provision prohibiting of illegal use of controlled substance by elected officials. That's on the agenda. I, I don't want to add that. Is that going to be added in? It's a separate agenda. Oh, well, it, we need to separate. Two three zero three six seven. Okay, so two three zero three six seven. All right. Uh, did I get confirmed? Uh, I did, but that was one of them. Um, also, let me get a list of because these are literally a lot that we are um, we are doing. I want to separate. Um, what did we do with two three zero three one nine? Did we send that back? That is on page seven at the bottom. It went back. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Um, and this is a lot that is on here. Are can we number these? All of these. A resolution number. She's gonna do that later. Do you ready to go? <laughs> I get, I've got to bet with Mr. Freeman as to what time we're gonna get out. And he, he ain't been there already. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so so what we we'll go ahead and do, um, just for the record, we will um, go ahead and put numbers on the rest of the resolution.
resolution. So the walk on resolution uh, to censor is number one. And then we're going to say resolution approving the appointment of Moses Timlin is number two. The resolution for approving Willie Buford is number three. Holly Wilson is number four. Sandra Smith Jones, number five. Peggy Stribling is number six. And I believe the Brownfield is number seven. Did they make the Brownfield number seven? So Brownfield is number seven. Yes. 
Mrs. Barrett? Yes. Mrs. Burley? Yes. Mrs. Lee? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. The vote is six yes, zero no. The vote is six yes, zero no. The consent agenda passes. <coughs> Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley? I'd like to motion, make a motion to table um, indefinitely 230413.
you simply just do. I don't know if you're mad because I've talked about you cussing out Pastor Tom. You said worse things to Pastor Thompson twice than I said to you, to you. They called you Wayne, but didn't say you were nasty. Your behavior at that point was deplorable. You should never send that text. You called Pastor Thompson all kinds of motherfuckers and fake ass pastors. You did that. Not once, but twice. You walked out in the Mitchell Boys right at the time of the vote. The video shows that. So they got to you and said, if we vote for you, you got up and walked out on the two little black boys that died in that fire. And you got mad because I questioned that $1,500 check that you took from Ashley Capital and didn't disclose it. You got mad because the $50,000 on Cyrus Park I questioned because you switched out your name on there and changed it from the director of president to another person when it became questionable. So I guess you might want to question me because I'm questioning you. But you made it personal sending stuff to that pastor that you knew what I was addressing. You sent an entirely fake text to someone and tried to make it credible. And it wasn't credible. So yes, that was a nasty thing to do. It was terrible, it was egregious. It was deplorable, should have never done it. I'll wait for my second round. Yeah. Anyone else would like to speak in the first round? Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley. You know, um, I don't like censoring ever anybody, but when I sat there and I had lies told on me, by you, Ms. Burns, and yes, we have talked about that. That still goes on. That lives on. And comments are made. What was your, what was your request? request? To the speaker, what lies did I tell them, Judy? That I went home and got a gun. Judy, we spoke about that. I just said we got a gun. Yeah, but don't say that. This is no back and forth. This is not a back and forth. Please proceed, Ms. Priestley. Yes, and um, you have yet to say who you heard that from. Do you want me to tell you now? Ms. Sure. Burns, you don't have the floor. No. Please proceed, Ms. Priestley. Yes. Um, and it was a lie. It was a lie. I did not go home and get a gun. So, yeah, I mean, rumors have started and said in council during meetings that affect people's lives. You're not the only one who does things that affect people's lives. Multiple members of this council have done the same. But that this one affected me. Request for information. What is your request? Uh, through you to the speaker, uh, your question in regards, did you say it in front of Attorney Kim that you went home and got a gun? No, ma'am. I carried my gun. I had my gun. Oh God, she really, she really did. Never doubted it. Oh my God. So yeah, it was said wrong. Matter of fact, I was when I came back. I came back. Well, that's not re related to this resolution at all. I'm an elected official. I really have felt a responsibility to come back after walking out of a meeting that I felt was being unproductive and was never gonna go anywhere. Changed my clothes, sat down, the more I thought about it, the more I thought I better come back. So my gun is with me at all times unless I cannot legally carry it. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Priestley. Anyone else like to speak on this resolution? Yes. Mr. Murphy. Thank you. Um, this resolution is dealing with her behavior when she was walking out the meeting and the guy was going back and forth shouting whatever was going on. Because I'd I be tuned out when that happens. What I um, asked Davina, and I would still stick with it because of the hostile environment that we dealing with, is so hostile on some of all of our parts, including me at times, with colleagues, because we just seem like we clash. So I had asked Davina to um, 
try to put together some training so that we can break this ice moving forward when we voted for president and vice president and new leadership for council because I believe this is what the public want. They want us to come in and um, get the business done. And, and Tanya, in my opinion, you got so much potential and I know that you're a note taker. You ask good questions and you bring so much value to this council, but then on the other hand, the emotions, and we all have them, we all get them. And I think we need to do better. And I know you try, I, I can see it. Um, but sometimes when you, and I have, so I'm not, I'm not, um, Saying, you know, I even done voted to censor my own self because I was like, Quincy, I think you went a little bit too far. So I be having to catch myself. And sometimes you just don't catch yourself and then when you go into this, it's almost like you black out. And then when you get ready to walk out, you walk down that little church aisle <laughs> and, and, and you, you get to going off and it's like, Get it. I'm already getting put out, or I'm already leaving, so let me finish it out. And so many people are dependent upon you to represent them. And just like you stayed tonight and you voted with us and against us, with however we, you know, we had dialogue, but we, you did what you was elected to do. And I appreciate that. But what, what I see is happening and not just with you. Uh, we are letting our emotions get us to the point. That's why I be down here talking woo fire sometimes when my colleagues in the first war get to going at me because I be having to um, practice self-control. Because if I go there, it's, I don't want to go there. And I know that's not what I've been elected to do. And I just hope moving forward, whatever happened that we as a body could um, work to try to get along good enough to get the business done in the city of Flint and show this public that we could at least try to come here and work together to get the work done because it's a lot of moving parts being city council then when we were sitting out there in the audience. And we just got so much stuff that we got to be up on. And I be learning from all of y'all. When I hear y'all talk and something, I, I'm, I be trying to find me some takeaways, some teachable moments. But sometimes those teachable moments ain't always good, especially the way how we conduct ourselves. But one thing I, I do, like that you have that you take notes and you be reading that stuff and doing your research. So I be learning from you. I learn from Judy. I learn from Dr. Um, Liddell and um, Eagle Worthy teach me how to um, kind of be quiet at times and don't say nothing. Just vote on it. Cause she been here for a long time. So she like, I, I done been out this road before. I already know what I'm about to do. I'm finna vote and I'm not finna get it. She don't even talk. Very, you know, do, can you talk to hi, hi. No, I'm just playing. But um, I just hope we can move forward because you got a lot of potential and they need you and people count on you. And we are a family. Anyone else would like to speak in the first round? Madam Chair. Um, I'm Tanya Hall. I'm from Lincoln Church. So one of the things that has been cited on here is, um, in addition, on September 14, 2023, Council Member Burns violated Council Rule 27.2 by engaging in argumentative discourse with a member of the audience. I recall when I first um, came to Council when we still had to do one of the meetings over at the county, and there was an audience member who 
said some things and I simply went during council response, um, said some things as well. And immediately after I got done speaking, uh, my colleague in the sixth ward chimed in and said, we cannot go back and forth with the audience. That we all hear things that we don't like and people say things that we do not like, but we have to hold our composure. I believe this particular instance that we're talking about here, Councilwoman Burns went into the audience. And the audience member stated that um, the, their, a finger was waved in their face and they felt uncomfortable. I will say that I want us all to practice what we preach. I want us all to give each other grace and be aware that while we can maintain composure sometimes, the composure is not maintained, but I don't want us to be hypocritical in our advice to colleagues. Um, and I, I want us to make sure that this is a place where audience members will not feel like we're going to come down and get in their face or say something to them. Um, we've had several members of the community who have said they would like to come to these meetings, but because the, the I'll use passion, because the passion runs so high here, they feel threatened to even come to these meetings that when they have come, they've been heckled by other audience members. And so I want us to be an example that we do not go out to the audience, that we do not um, make the audience feel uncomfortable when, when they say things. I get it from sitting up here. There might be something that you might want to say back during council response for clarification of some things, but we cannot go into the audience and make them feel uncomfortable, make them feel as though we are being aggressive with them and we're standing in their faces. We have to be careful with that kind of thing. Um, I, I think also, I guess it's not easy getting warnings, it's not easy being upset, it's not easy feeling like someone is talking to you in a tone in which you feel like they're not speaking to you as though you are an adult, much less a human being. Um, I, I think we have to respect the position of the chair and i say that keeping in mind that the chair also has to watch and monitor their tones i get that again we are dealing with some serious issues here which, in which passions run high now people like to get off into all this like dislike nobody is anybody is anybody's personal life so liking and disliking is a matter of something personal if you don't have a personal interaction with someone them liking or disliking you should be neither here nor there what matters is, can we sit up here, do what we're elected to do with some decorum? Can we get through meetings? Can we get through them respectfully? Can we get through them without the vulgar language? Um, can we follow the rules that we keep having people request to be relaxed? The bottom line is, the rules are the rules. The, the respect of the chair should be there no matter who is chairing the meeting. Everyone up here is an adult. The onus on you to stay in a meeting and stay respectful is exactly that, on you. We cannot blame other adults for our inability to, to regulate our emotions. We are up here with a duty and a responsibility, so staying in your seat, staying present, and regulating your emotions are on you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on the first round? Madam Chair. Ms. Worthy. Um, I don't really have to say anything, but I'll just try to make it quick. I, am myself, am not a perfect person. Um, I've done and said things that I'm not proud of. However, I barely talk, as Mr. Murphy stated. <clears throat> And that is because when this first when this council first came, I was the target. I was the target, and the hate directed towards me um, by several, but mainly um, Miss Burns was very overwhelming. And it continues not just towards me, but Miss Lewis. 
constantly saying you're a horrible person. Um, I believe she got Miss Lewis and Miss Mushak confused because it was her first time chairing today. And it almost like was the same language she would use for Dr. Lewis. Um, we don't have to do that. We do not have to share how much we dislike someone to vote on an issue. We are not voting on people. We are not voting on personalities. We are voting on issues. And too many times, um, it, it switches into pure hatred and just a way to express how much we're unhappy. And talk about lies. So many lies have been said about me. Um, absolute untruths. And uh, that it, it's unbelievable, really. And as Ms. Priestley stated, those things become true in the minds of those who are listening at home. So you repeat a lie over and over and over again, and in the mind of the public, it's truth. She hit Jasmine Green, and many people, they, they actually believe I did that. Yeah, it didn't, didn't happen because there'd be a police report. There, were no, there was no police report because it didn't happen. I've never hit anyone, but projection is a thing. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, other people have. Um, I've been fired from my job. Never happened. I've never been fired from a job. But Ms. Burns has stated publicly many times on Facebook, on her show, um, to the... Request for information. What is your request? We haven't talked about your, what your other colleagues have. I have not. You did. You, no, um, I, did I specifically not. have a video of you no. saying that to the no, ethics and accountability board. This is not a back and forth, Ms. Burns. Please proceed. But maybe you have said so much that you don't remember. And that's the thing. Why is this council person focusing so much on others instead of the issues at hand? Um, I remain quiet because I know how I'm going to vote. If there's an issue that comes up that I have a question about or would like to you know, state my support for, I speak up. Otherwise, it's I just wish we would get this over. And I do hope for our meetings in the future that we just vote on the issues. I doubt that's ever gonna happen. It's been six years I've been on here and it's yet to happen. Um, I still hope for that because if I didn't have that hope, I wouldn't be here. Um, I'm still here to fight for my war, but it has been very difficult. And I believe that we should Censure those who um, who are not here to do the work, and then move on to suspensions because it's holding the city back, and uh, we we have to move forward. And Herman Roder, when she left, said these things like, "Please stop focusing on each other, move the city forward." That is my hope for you. Unfortunately, things just got worse after that, instead of better. Um, but it's not healthy. It's not healthy for the person dishing out the lies, the accusations, the hate. And it's not healthy for the person receiving it. Um, and, and so, who are we hurting? We're hurting ourselves, and we're hurting the city uh, when we concentrate on each other. And I was the one that was called a wage. Not a wedge. Um, that was me. Thank you. Thank you. So, seeing that there is no one else to speak in the first round, I'll go ahead and take my turn. When Ms. Burns first started speaking, everything was directed towards me. You brought this to the floor. You, you, you. And then she went on an attack about me. And this is for her censure. I'll go ahead and take it from the top. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll talk to you since you don't want to hear it. When we first were elected, I thought that we were going to do great things. We were campaigning to with one another, and I really wanted her to get the position. And then when we were elected, 
I saw that she began to sway from what's right to doing, uh, I guess, uh, doing what was right on behalf of Eric to stay in line. And I, and I asked her, I asked her about it, because I was concerned. Because I'm like, whoa, you're not the same person who I started with. Everyone that, that know me, they know exactly. They know exactly how Liddell is. Liddell has not changed since day one. I only changed for the better. I only improved. I only get the hump off my back. I will never take a turn from the word. Request your information. And see, here we go. What's your request? And I would like clarity. Um, when did I ask, when did you tell me that you didn't like what I was doing? We never had that conversation. We did, Ms. No, Burns. We did okay, see, okay, well, thank you. It's not a back and forth again. The point is, we have a hard time getting what's true out of Ms. Burns. And as you all saw, she was willing to break form when Eric May said, Tanya, look around. When he stood up to break form, she stood up. And that's when Council Person Machette called for us to stand at ease till we have form. That's hindering the city's business when you break form. He told her, break form, and she did it. That's not what we're here for. And a lot of the meetings that we call dumpster fire, they were because of our colleague in the first ward telling them to do that. And because they don't want to face any ridicule, any friction, any heat coming from Mr. First Ward, they acquiesce. And I understand it because that's, this is a hostile working environment. You see, he'll talk about your lips, he'll talk about your handicap, he'll talk about everything he wants to. He would demean and degrade you. So I understand if our colleagues would do exactly what he said. They support motions that are clearly against the rules. The rule is black and white, but they will support it because they don't want to hear the backlash. So when Eric, when Mr. Mays is not here, you're she's not too difficult to work with. Because she what is your request? Um, please stop my time. Speaking to my, my Lord Roberts Rule 43.21, that's inaccurate. I said nothing about your you, motive. You said, Madam Chair, you stated when Mr. Mays isn't here, how I vote. You're speaking to my, my motive for how I vote. I said, you're, I, I, said, I said you're not bad to work with. So again, let's not misconstrue and abuse that point. Ms. Ms. Burns, you will be, this is not it. Ms. Burns, you're out of order. Uh, hold on, Ms. Madam Clerk, let's reclaim my time. And what is your point? I, I withdraw. Thank you. So I need my, my seconds back, please. Again, this is, when she was speaking, I not once said anything, and everything was harsh and directed towards me. I just sat here and listened. But when it's time for someone else to speak, you point an order, point of information to death. So when you say that I sent them to the pastor that was untrue, the unfortunate part is I saw that posting on Facebook, I sure did, and I said, wow, this is horrible that she said this. And if it's not true, the sad part is so much negativity is put out by you that it's known to that it's assumed to be true. Like for example, when you told someone that you obviously don't have much of a life as you post anonymously a series of lies. What your mother should have done was swallow you or left you on the mattress. Have a good night. When I tune into your show, and only thing I hear is Liddell Lewis stealing money, Liddell Lewis stealing money. And then you're telling people that I done walked out on some kids involved in the house fire. All of those things are false. And then when we talk about um, Pastor Thompson, one thing we don't talk about is, is, is Michigan law, MCL 75539D, that states because no one was in the room, so no one should know what we were talking about because I called Pastor Thompson on his personal phone. So everything that was said is just an assumption. So for you to know, unless you were with me or with him, that's something else. But it's against Michigan law to put anybody to record a conversation or put them on speakerphone. So are you saying that Pastor Thompson violated Michigan law? Furthermore. Request some information. Would you like me to answer that? Not at all. Madam, Madam Clerk, give my time back.
several times you stated on the record, Judy went home to get a gun. I asked on the record, who told you that? You never would say. Ms. Burns, you brought up watching my son in my absence. You never have babysat my child. You're telling people that my marriage is a false, a, a farce. I've been with my husband 13 years and happy. You're telling the people you know how I get down. Well, if you do know, if you know, enlighten me. This is why we're giving you this censor. Then you left the meeting yelling out, girl, shut up, girl, shut up, girl, shut up. I'm not a girl, and you don't tell me to shut up. I'm Madam Chair when I'm in this seat. And because of that reason, this is why you have a censor. So now we have completed the first round. Now it's time for the second round. Yeah, and, and thank you, Madam Chair, Mike Floor. Ms. Burns. So I don't, all the stuff you said, you're ridiculous. And one thing that y'all not familiar with is the truth. Jasmine Stanley came to that podium and stated she was hit and the officer was there. She stated at the podium and I saw her. And there's the two other people who've seen it too. So that, that y'all need to stop lying. And as far as number one with Doug who came, Councilwoman Candace Michelle, your sequence of events is so inaccurate, it's shameful. Because he asked me, how did I pay for my shirt? And could I show him and show the city attorney? And I did just that on my iPad. I took my iPad and showed him the receipt along with the city attorney. So you're telling a lie. I've never seen so y'all have cooked up this stuff. And Judy, you and I had this conversation. We had a very good conversation. Now when you said that, anything that we have had a disagreement, and you want to, I guess still, I don't know if you're saying because I didn't vote for you for president, I don't know what it is, but I did ask you about the gun. We had a whole discussion, because yes, it was told to me, and you were blaming Trevor at first, and I told you because you had called and asked, I believe, him for a holster. And so we need to stop all of this, this mess. And so yes, I didn't point my finger in, in, in Doug's face. He asked to see a receipt. So if you're showing some a someone a receipt, you have to point to it. Councilwoman Candace Michelle, you point to it. He asked me to show the city attorney. I showed attorney Kimfer, and then I showed Doug. Y'all waste so much time. Your sequence of events are absolutely incorrect. And by the way, Councilwoman Candace Michelle, you did call Councilman Pfeiffer you, when your microphone was off a slithering snake. You did. So when you want to come and tell me on the, the highest, most authority in your chair, you didn't simply forgot. You called him a slithering snake that day. You absolutely did. Absolutely did. But you want to tell me we have, we have to be able to take it. None of us, as I stated, every single council person up here said cuss word. Everyone. I mean, some things may have startled us to the point that even when Councilwoman Priestley said she would have Trevor's balls, that startled me. I was like, I'm like, what did Trevor do? I mean, like, he, I, we were we were shocked. Thanks for the information. <laughs> did you know that my my niece told me she would hear it herself? I, and I believe she will. I truly do. So that was an improper point of information. Please proceed. So when we talk about what everyone has said, you know, Councilwoman Worthy, before meeting, you call me a narcissistic asshole. I have never even given you really the opportunity of the day because a lot of things that you say don't bother me. But yet you have stood up twice over me and incited violence and wanted to fight. Grown woman, I'm a grown woman, you're a grown woman too. And I did not engage that first time. The second time you said, well, we know you're not going to do anything until I stood up. So when we talk about what happened, y'all have a, a, a strange relationship with the truth. You do. And yes, absolutely, Councilwoman Lewis, I have watched your son while he was there. Very pleasant when he was out there in Mount Morris camping with us. You weren't there. And like you said, the Risha is your godfather. So don't say, he's in the pool swimming. Very bright young man. So don't sit and act like I don't know you and all this other stuff. Because don't do that. Y'all need to stop this. Report so, information. I'm not denied. Denied. That's not an option. So, did you stop did my you, time? Did, yeah, that's fine. But then you say at the last meeting, when I made the statement, you said that you 
watched my son jump in the pool and my son was scared of water. You said that you did not. Madam Chair, you're taking the floor. That's not what I'm saying. You're taking the floor. No, I'm reclaiming my time. Ms. Burns, that is fine. That Ms. Burns, you're doing what you do, so that is fine. You're taking the floor. Ms. Burns, you're doing what you do. I have the floor. Go ahead. You're doing what you do. I have the floor, not you. And let me tell you, so if this is y'all opportunity, I could care less. Because once my little minute is up and done with, then I'm going home. But y'all are some liars. Just liars. So if you talk crazy to me, I'm going to talk crazy to you. That's just simply going to happen. And y'all do some stuff that a lot of times I, I hold in a whole lot. I sit in my seat. The Councilwoman Lachette, for you to just boldly tell that lie with Doug. I just can't believe that. Because he asked for my receipt. He asked for it and asked me to show the city attorney. And I did. And then you can say, I was I was argumentative. He said, my perfectly manicured fingernail. I hadn't had a feeling in six, seven weeks. When I got to get my nail done, she said, Tony, you wait too long. You shouldn't wait so long. My fingernails weren't perfectly manicured, needed a feeling really bad. So I mean the stuff that y'all do, look. Have your kangaroo court. I'm going home and do whatever y'all need to do. But this foolishness, y'all need to stop. Liddell, yeah, you sent the bogus text message and you shouldn't have. And shame on you. Shame on you. You shouldn't have did that. And you sent it to the pastors. Have a blessed night. I'm going home. Madam Chair. Ms. Michelle. Yes, so. As my colleague packs up, running from the truth as she often does, yeah, it obeys her. Let it, let it, let it hug you, baby. Let the no, truth hug you. She's because honest. first of all, I'm not arguing. I have the floor. You do not. As I was saying, I did not make up any lie. Mr. Matthews stated what happened to him. You cannot go into an audience member's face and point your finger. Feel however you want. Furthermore. The whole I say you don't have the floor. The whole I say that somebody was a slithery snake. So not so. So not so. But it's amazing how it's oh you did say it off the mic. No, I said what I said and I said it on the mic. I have no problems with repeating what I'm saying. I have no problems with being truthful. There is nothing that can happen to me for telling the truth. Uh, the person that has an interesting relationship with the truth is departing because they cannot stand uh, in who they are. Right. And so, as I was saying, uh, you, you are clearly walking out the door, baby. Departing. So, as I was saying, hold on, Councilwoman Lachette, for, for the record, Councilwoman Burns was just being disorderly, leaving, yelling out, and didn't have the floor. Please proceed. The very reason why she is being censored. Because when the opportunity came to show that the behavior could be different, not only did she not rise to the occasion, but she decided to kick up dust on her way out. Um, part of the problem here is the fact that Facebook seems to have some sort of grip and some sort of hold, and people cannot seem to understand that this is a professional work environment and what we do and what we say it affects this work environment and how we are able to relate to our colleagues. I don't know that there is too much more to be said other than for us to go ahead and vote on this because her behavior on the way out the door simply proves exactly what this says, and that is this is a resolution censuring council member Tanya Burns for conduct unbecoming of a city council member. And so on her way out the door, all she simply said was everything I did before, ditto, and add to that. I am done. Anyone else would like to speak? Okay, um, I would. So I'll be able to listen and I'm grown and I'm screwed. Because the unfortunate part is a lot of that, a lot of this backlash and stuff is targeted towards me. I don't know why. If we tune in to her show, we hear a lot of things about Liddell did, Liddell did. Let's go ahead and just state a couple of facts. I'm just going to clear this up and then I will move forward. On September the 14th, Ms. Burns went into the audience and she had some, uh, uh, an exchange with Mr. Matthews. Whatever the exchange was, when I looked up, I saw her finger pointing at him. I called her out of order. When I called her out of order, her colleague that didn't want her to be 
punished for violating rule 27.2, they immediately got up to break corn. When you get up to break corn, you are interfering with the business of the city, and according to Robert's rules, you are out of order. That is the law. That is Robert's rule. And so as she say that we're telling a lie, these are Mr. Doug Matthews' own words. She stood over me and wagged her perfectly manicured finger. She was really angry, and I had to ask her to move away. I actually like Ms. Burns. To, unfortunately, too bad all of our recording can't stay to hear this, but we're going to go ahead and keep going. I, I actually like Ms. Burns. Yep, that part. So, I find it very personable and easy, excuse me, I find her very personable and easy to talk to. I've also heard a lot of good things about Ms. Winfrey Carter being caring and responsive to people. But in my opinion, they had a conflict here and have done harm to the city. And what Mr. Doug Matthews was referring to, unfortunately, he was referring to the conflict of interest that it looked like Ms. Burns and Ms. Winfrey Carter had with the Lento Law Group. He got up here as a resident of the city of Flint and he was addressing this, the fact that our council people are representing a law firm that is suing the city and involved in lawsuits. So with all this being said, no one is lying. If anyone is lying, we're calling our resident, Mr. Matthews, a lie. And then we're calling the colleagues that looked up and saw her pointing in his face a lie. We don't have to lie. And then when she left today, what did she do? She was being disorderly, not talking and not having the floor. And then she was yelling out from, from behind, from the back of the room. We didn't make this stuff up. You can't make this up. This is what's happening in real time. And so for us to deny this and act like that is not going on, we have a problem. So that's why today we're voting to give Ms. Burns a warning. We're voting to warn Ms. Burns because we did the same thing with Mr. Eric Mays. We censored him, we gave him a warning, letting him know that if this behavior persists, there will be a punishment to follow. So that is all this censure is saying. Ms. Burns, because of your past conduct, you are receiving a warning for unacceptable behavior and for not properly representing the sixth board on this city council. So I wanted to make that clear for the record because a lot of times, a lot of truth gets lost. But I'm here to reveal all of it. Because at the end of the day, that's all we have to stand on. And my memory isn't good enough to tell a lie. I don't have time either. So either it happened or it did not. Just like again, she said that she washed my child. Never has she been employed or engaged to wash my son. Why would you say that? But a lot of things are said from these seats that are not true. But please keep in mind that under the freedom of speech, you have the right to lie. You get the right to repeat yourself over and over again until people believe it, just like the accusation of taking money. Very untrue. But I challenge the residents of the sixth ward, individuals here, people that's listening, I challenge them to pay close attention and hold people accountable, not because of your personal politics and who you like, but because of what is right. And if you do that, you will definitely see a change in the trajectory of who you support. So with that being said, we're going to call for the vote to warn Councilwoman Tanya Burns. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes. Yes. Murphy? Yes. 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 Vote is 5 yes, 0 no. Um, that resolution number one has passed. Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley. I'd like to make a motion to table indefinitely 230413. 
There's a motion to table it definitely. Resolution 230, Wolf Lester. 413. 413. Is there any support? Support. Is that, that supported by Ms. Worthy? Okay, supported by Ms. Worthy. Chair. Oh, Ms. Priestley. Ms. Shelley. Through you to Ms. Shelley. seems to be that the only way we can get it through the administration's head that this should be separate resolutions is to table it indefinitely so it can come back again. So this resolution has money in it for, um, for um, light elimination, economic development, there's four four different items under that, and then an additional five under administration. Send us resolutions that detail, you, you know, I want to get somebody in there to get rid of the property that the city owns. I'll pay, I'll, I'll vote for that. But as a whole, this four million dollar <coughs> resolution, no, there's parts of it that I want to, that, yeah, and so, and in, in, this, in the um, charter, I believe, says that each resolution should have only one subject matter. Yeah, this is all ARPA, but there are different categories within ARPA. Bring it to me and within, with different categories, three different resolutions or four different resolutions, not just one. That's my feeling, thank you. All right, anyone else would like to speak? First round? Okay, seeing none, anyone in the second round? Okay, only one round. Yep. So, with that being said, we're looking to table indefinitely. Resolution, say it again. 230413. That resolution yeah, right there. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Shadow? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Murphy? Yes. Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Vote is five, yes, zero, no. Vote is five, yes, zero, no. Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley. Make a motion to approve 230364. Motion to approve 230364. 364. Any support? Support. Supported by, this one is worthy. Worthy. All right. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead. What page is that on? Page eight.
in order to save them from um, sending them to special affairs. And just like y'all got businesses downtown that love to probably get their drink on on Sunday, we got a whole bunch of liquor stores on the north end of Clinton that really needed to shut down.
there should be no reason not to support this because if someone is, they are a hindrance to this city by their actions and um, the way they represent themselves. Still don't think it's gonna pass, that's a shame um, because I think some of the behavior on council could be eliminated. But then also I do think that some may be using legal substances, but just a little too much. Uh, nothing you can do about that. Point, point of information. What's your request for you to the speaker? Um, I, I, I want you to know I don't support this and I don't use illegal substance at all, or do drugs, or drink. Good for you. Yeah. I, I think in my opinion, you have your reasons that you can explain at any point. No, I didn't say you must. I don't understand why you don't support it if you don't use illegal substances. I don't understand. Because we as elected officials should be here, sober, um, and of sound mind. And it should be a requirement. It's politics. We were elected to do a job, and if we can't do that job, then that's one more protection for us in the city. Thank you. Well, look at it. She went there. All right, so, um, say so seeing that, we're going to go ahead and vote for the resolution. Roll call, Madam Clerk. It is to table the in-depth one. Ms. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Barrett? No. No. The vote is two yes, three no. The vote is two yes, three no. That fails. So now we're back to the original motion. The chair will entertain a motion to. I make a motion to approve. To approve. Is there any support? Support. Supported by Council Machette. Any discussion? Yes. Mr. Murphy. Thank you. Um, so here's the deal where I'm at with this situation. Um, I don't know no other municipalities that um, have rules that actually drug test their elected officials. Um, I, if people on drugs or doing whatever, I don't know, that's their personal business. Um, I will hope that we will um, conduct ourselves in decent matters, but I kind of think this one is real personal. This rule that one of, if you can show me other um, municipalities and bring me some data where Detroit City Council and city councilmen all across this country or these states, these cities, these municipalities that have city councilmen actually have a rule in place where they drug test and elected officials, then maybe I'll um, reconsider. But we, we, we put together a chart. I served on the chart. And when this discussion came up about should we do stuff like this, and what, based on the research that we did, there was not other municipalities doing this. Is this something you guys want to do and put it in the rules? Or, yeah, I guess you guys probably should look at that and get five votes, but I'm just, uh, if somebody come up in here drunk or high, we just have to deal with it. If they drunk and high and we see it, we, I'm sure we gonna be able to um, act accordingly and, do something about it. Uh, I, I just, I just think this overreaching, and I just can't be part of it. Um, and I'm not supporting this for the record because I do drugs or um, smoke weed or drink or anything. Um, I, I I will get a drink every now and again if I go somewhere and I decide that's what I want to do. So I ain't against you catching me somewhere with a drink in my hand, but um, I, I'm just against it. That's just that, and to each his own. But I don't do drugs or I don't drink really like that. 
every now and then, probably twice or three times a year. So um, I'm not against this because I might do it or you might need to test me. I'll free you just off rip, do a drug test whenever anybody decides that's what they want to do if you don't believe me. Um, but I'm not against this because I, I do it, so I don't want that to be what people think. Madam Chair. All right, great. I'm not going to talk long. I just wanted to say I did not think that Pizzi did drugs. <laughs> For the record, <laughs> I just didn't understand. No. Um, so please do not take it that way. Um, it's not going to pass anyways, and I'm just ready to vote. Thank you. All right, thank you. So seeing that there's no one else that would like to speak on this, I'll be allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and come from Michelle. Madam Chair. Attorney Kim. Oh, there you are. Quick question for you, because I know at one point the state did this and then the state stopped doing this. Um, and I, I know that there are other municipalities that do it. I can't find any in Michigan, but I have found some in other states. Is there a Michigan law that says we cannot test elected officials? Or illegal drugs. There's not a Michigan law that says it can't happen. What there is is uh, Supreme Court cases that that uh, limit the circumstances limit the circumstances under which uh, drug testing can occur. Thank you, Attorney Ken. Okay. So, uh, so thank you. Uh, so, the chair, Ms. Priestley. Okay, so I wouldn't be allowed to speak. So uh, one thing I'd like is a good challenge. So I know I can find a municipality that is doing something drug related. Um, but this is one quote that a firefighter said. And he said, if, if I'm gonna work for you people, he said, then I wanna know that you're drug free too. So we have to make sure that we keep the standards high. When we keep standards high, we have um, optimal performance. And so, I clearly it's not going to pass tonight, but at least you know where your council people stand. Not saying that the ones that vote no are doing the illicit drugs, not implying that at all. But we're just saying that we would like for us to be in tandem when we are talking about work on behalf of the people. And we would like to be of sound mind as we make major decisions that's going to affect this city for generations to come. So with that being said, roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Murphy. You did say Murphy. Oh, I thought you were worthy. I'm ready to vote. No, no. <laughs> Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Michelle? Yes. Yes. Ms. Yes. The vote is three yes, two no. The vote is three yes, two no. That resolution failed. Motion to adjourn. All right, there's a motion to adjourn. Support. Supported by Council Michelle. Uh, Pro call my clerk. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Michelle? Yes. Ms. Worthen? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Well, it's five yes, zero, no. The city council meeting is now adjourned. Hey, we don't bet this thing. And it was a dumpster fire for the record. We did it. We got through the entire agenda. Hey, man, where you going with this? We approved a million what, of dollars. Let's put a bottle over here on the table. Oh, come on. Man, where the money at? You got the money over there, too?
but uh, liquor, yeah. Oh, because um, I, I grew up in a neighborhood where they drink too much, and they always come in our ass to work. Now, I have to know it's about over here while I'm at home. And that little story of our community, especially our African-American men, they just put all the sugar and you know Are you on top? I'm going to recycle first. Oh, I guess I should have done that. I Get up! 